so they're very similar in their running attacks as Georgia ranks first in the conference in running the football and Kentucky's right behind them. As far as defense is concerned, Kentucky has been very effective in stopping the run, giving up just 88 yards per game. Georgia, on the other hand, has been able to uh, stop the opponents at allowing 136 yards per game. And right now, we're going to take a break, so we'll be back after this 90-second network break on the Georgia Bulldog Network. The fans are going wild. They're charging like Bulldogs with the Bank South Georgia Bulldog Visa Card. It has its own Bulldog design and offers every benefit a regular Visa Card does, but also helps support UGA. Because Bank South will donate part of your annual fee plus a part of each purchase to the General Scholarship Program. Charge like a Bulldog with the Bank South Georgia Bulldog Visa Card. To apply, visit Bank South or call 1-800-553-DOGS. That's 1-800-553-DOGS. It's our biggest sale of the year, the Fall Car Care Day Sale at participating Napa Auto Parts stores and service outlets. Now you can winterize your car at prices that won't freeze your budget. Save on the parts you need now for import and domestic cars. Don't miss the Napa Fall Car Care Day Sale at participating outlets where you see the Napa sign of quality. Now you can buy Perrier with a twist of lemon, a twist of lime, or a twist of orange. No sugar, no salt, no calories, nothing artificial. Just the refreshing taste you get with a twist. University of Georgia football on AM 750 WSB, the sports voice of the South, is brought to you by Mitchell Motors, Georgia's oldest Oldsmobile, Isuzu, and Rolls-Royce dealer, by Cofer Brothers Building Supplies on Main Street in Tucker, by your Atlanta Coca-Cola bottler, bottler of Coke and Coke Classic, by Kuppenheimer Men's Clothiers, America's number one value clothiers for men, by Hardee's, we're out to win you over. This Bulldog game is also brought to you by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. By Bud Light, the light beer with the first name and taste. By Dixie Crystal Sugar. And by Delta Airlines. At Delta, we love to fly, and it shows. Now, let's join Larry Munson, Phil Schaefer, and Lauren Smith for the play-by-play -play action as the Georgia Bulldogs take the field. Georgia getting set to take on the Kentucky Wildcats, and it's been quite a while since Kentucky has won a game in this series. You have to go all the way back to 1977 when Kentucky won here in Athens by a score of 33 to nothing. Last year, Georgia exploded for 21 points in the second quarter, went on to win that ball game, 31 to 9 over Kentucky. There was a fumble in the 25 that led to the first score on the next possession. John Little intercepted and ran 46 yards for a TD and then a John Brantley interception set up the third score of the quarter. Lars Tate got the final Georgia TD. He finished the day with 103 yards and Georgia won that ball game by a score of 31 to 9. Speaking of John Brantley, he has really been playing well of late. Uh, he posted 17 tackles against LSU and had 18 last week against Vanderbilt. And, of course, Vince Dooley has described him as one of the best linebackers to ever play here at the University of Georgia. And uh, he has really been playing well of late. And speaking of late, I have been handed a note that says late, late, late in the first quarter, Duke 3, Maryland nothing. Our producer, Hugh Christian, with the cute little notes that he passes along to us. We talked earlier about the fact that Kentucky has not been able to run on Georgia in some time. When you look back over the record books and you see what the, the Wildcats have been able to do against Georgia, it's been just about nil on the ground. It would shock you to realize that only once in this decade, in the 80s, has Kentucky been able to gain more than 100 yards on the ground against Georgia? In fact, the dogs have really stopped them cold. As you look back over the years, for the last seven years, 
Kentucky has averaged 61 yards on the ground, Georgia 291, and in recent times, it's been even more dominating. For the last four years, the last four times these two teams have met, Kentucky has a grand total of 173 yards on the ground, whereas Georgia has rushed for 1,397 yards. So that means that Georgia's averaging right around 350 yards a game against Kentucky, and the Wildcats are averaging 43 yards against Georgia. Last year, Kentucky got 92. The year before that, they got 36 yards. The year before that, they only got 10 yards on the ground, and the year before that, 35. So Kentucky has been stopped cold on the ground by Georgia. Now, Kentucky has a solid running game this year. What will happen? Well, we'll just have to wait and see. Kentucky has a better offensive line this year than they've had in some time. They've got a good stable of running backs. But Georgia and Kentucky, it's like looking in the mirror. They both run the same schemes. They both run the same offense. They both run the same defense. And sometimes when you get down to that, it's just a matter of who has the best athlete in that particular position. Now, I was... You've got to wonder how Kentucky will approach this game against Georgia as they come racing out onto the field. In fact, here comes both squads. Georgia running between the band made up of alumni and the Kentucky Wildcats on the far side of the field. Georgia may look at a Kentucky passing attack this afternoon, and the Kentucky might try to just come out a little early and loosen things up to help their running game a little bit. But that remains to be seen. Kentucky has the top kicker at the conference, by the way. Joe Worley has kicked 11 out of 14 field goal attempts this year. He's been successful. He has only missed one point after touchdown in 17 tries. And on three different times, he has had, well, actually on nine different times, he's been able to kick three field goals in one game. So his percentage has been extremely good. And his senior year, he has also changed his name from Joe to Joey. He now goes by Joey Worley. And Kentucky has a solid kicking game to go with their ground attack. Their quarterback situation is a little bit different in that Glenn Four will start today. He came in when Kevin Dooley suffered the injury against Ohio University. He got hit by two players, one sort of in the front, one of sort of in the back at the same time, and ended up having uh, damage to the kidney. They put him in the hospital for two weeks. They just wouldn't let him do anything. They said that he had to stay there because they were afraid that there would be some damage. And uh, so Dooley came out of the hospital late last week, was cleared to go to practice, and was in full gear on Monday and says he will play today. And they'll probably use him as a change of pace. Kentucky has won the toss. However, they will kick off. Georgia will receive, and that means that Kentucky will have the option to do what they want as the second half gets underway. But right now we've got the first half to contend with, and to do that, the legendary voice of the Georgia Bulldogs, who looks fit as a fiddle on his homecoming, and is uh, all set to go with this Southeastern Conference battle. Legendary voice of the Georgia Bulldogs, Larry Munson. All right, thank you, Phil. Now, get the picture. Kentucky will be in white tops and in blue bottoms. They have white helmets, blue numbers, and the dogs are going to be in red tops with the red helmets and, of course, the silver britches and the white numbers. And the officials conferring for the sake of television out in the middle of the field to give them an extra half a minute or so. And now the officials break it out, and the cats and the dogs We'll break it out and get ready. Southeastern Conference action. Television at the moment. However, we always have late arrivals. Television has cleared out a pretty good corner. Uh, on the east stands up high, it is empty. And over on the northeast corner, down behind one corner of the end zone, it is pretty much empty. In other words, it looks like a lot of students are not here yet. But there's a pretty good crowd coming in late outside. So the Cats will kick off. Osborne and Rodney Hampton will be deep for the dogs. We are in front of the bridge waiting to receive Kentucky on the closed end of the stadium. We'll be kicking off. And the officials have not set the ball down yet. Ken Willis will set it down for Kentucky. I watched two of their field goal kickers 
before the game, and a guy who has not been kicking was kicking 57 and 56 yarders. But Worley has had a great record. All right, the Cats and the Dogs in the conference. And Willis kicks off. High and deep coming around to four or five. It's on the five to Osborne to the 10, coming this way to the 15. Somebody came off a block and just ran him out on the 18. And I mean, he ran him out hard. He had a blocker there, and some big defender just absolutely wiped the blocker out and drove him out. Lauren? Well, you see James Jackson going in there. He came home from Vandy on crutches, but he had a good healing week. He is in pretty good shape, but they got to see how long he, he can go. But I think you'll see them play Wayne Johnson regardless of how James Jackson is physically. I think Georgia will play both quarterbacks today from what I understand. Lewis and Tate, the running backs, we split two men out, and the Cats are in a 5-3. Jackson, a little toss sweep, and he's going to fake a reverse as Tate came out, and then Tate got in trouble and lost three yards in the far side of the field on the 15. We faked the reverse on the first play, a toss sweep to Tate, faked the reverse, dorched the end on the other side of the field, and Jeff Kramer, a linebacker, both hit him over there, and a loss of about about two, two and a half, second down. Tate almost uh, ran into the man who he was making the handoff to. They almost started dancing on the 15-yard line. Georgia in an eye slot to the right. The Cats are in a 5-3 again, though they've left a gap in the line. Jackson to Tate, try to go a hole at the right tackle. They shut it down. He came out to about the 19 and got about four yards. But from second down and 12 and a half or so, it'll be about third and nine. Vic Adams, the right guard, and Jeff Kramer, the linebacker, hit him again. Coaches have tried to warn Georgia all week long how tough it was going to be to run on these guys. No score early. Dogs a third down, eight and a half on our own 19. Slot right. Kentucky reading blitz a little. Jackson back, dumps it on the flank, complete in the 15 to take to the 20. To the 25, he ran over a man and drove and got a first down to the 30. Tate hit a guy headgear to headgear around the 27. Good blocks by Ellis, the fullback, and Stevens, a guard, and a first down to the 30. Tate really ran hard after catching that pass out on the flat. Shannon, uh, the left guard, and Kramer, and Robinson on the stop. It was like a screen, but Tate cut back behind the blockers, used him well and got the needed yardage. Georgia first down in the 30. Toss sweep to Tate. A hole at the tackle trying to come outside. They hit him on the 31. They were forcing him farther out and he only got a yard and that was Ron Robinson kid out of Nashville, Tennessee. The free safety who hit him first. It'll be second down and about nine. We had a hole. We had kicked the end one way and boxed the tackle in and as he started in there, the secondary of the Cats was coming up so fast he really only got about two feet. No score early, beautiful fall weather, and it looks like a lot of students decided to watch it on the two. We're in an eye with two wideouts. Kentucky's in a four. Now they come up to about a five. Little Jackson back, throws it over in the left flat, and Tate dropped the ball. Threw it in the left flat two or three yards behind the line on the short side of the field, and dropped it. Adams and Reese on the right side of the Kentucky defensive line were driving in with pretty good pressure. Lauren, what do you got? There you got Kentucky blitzing hard or coming hard. Sometimes they come with eight, sometimes seven, and it doesn't mean that it has to be third and long as it is now, but they came pretty hard on second down then, but I think based on their pattern, you might see them coming pretty hard again right now on third down and nine. Third down, a long nine, pro set this time. Kentucky's in a five. Jackson back to throw. In trouble, running back around a 15, back around a 10. He's in trouble. Try to throw a screen of some sort, and we may have an illegal pass, or did somebody hit him late? Ball incomplete, 20 yards behind the line as they drove Jackson back 25, 30 yards. An official threw a flag after he was down with a couple of big cats on top of him, and let's get the call. They really put the blitz on him that time. Lauren was right about the fact that they'll, they'll come at you, and that time they brought the linebacker. Intentional grounding. Larry, there was Randy Jackson was out there in the vicinity of where the pass was thrown. Intentional grounding, yes, it's not called often. Though normally a, a decision on that thing is you, you worry or they make noise about as you dump it out of bounds. Georgia now all the way back on their own two-yard line. And third and nine has become fourth and a million. 
No score early, and we are in terrible shape here because standing under the crossbar is Joey Hester, the punter. So Kentucky loads eight men on the line. Let's see if they all come. Hester's kick. Long, angling a little left, and it hit around the 42, bounced backwards, and went out of bounds. He did not get it to midfield. He didn't get it up where he wanted, but he was standing in the end zone and kicked it out to the 41-yard line. Timeout here, 60-second network break on the Georgia Bulldog Network. When Georgia families need service from their insurance agent, State Farm is there. From Savannah to Marietta, when you have a question or a claim, your State Farm agent is there, usually right down the street or as close as your phone, with answers, with help, with service you can count on for your auto, home, life, or health insurance. That's what makes State Farm a good value wherever you live in Georgia. And like a good neighbor, personal service. State Farm is there. Imagine you're on the vacation of your dreams. Europe. Hawaii, Mexico, the Bahamas, Bermuda, maybe even Alaska or the Orient. Delta Airlines offers dream vacations to all these places and many others. One price takes care of airfare, accommodations, and much more. Turn your dreams into reality with a Delta Dream Vacation. See your travel agent or call Delta Airlines. We love to fly, and it shows. Kentucky has excellent field position because of a call that was made that meant that Georgia was back to their two-yard line. And Larry, I'm still miffed by the call of the of the pass because Randy Jackson was down the field. The ball was thrown very close to him, and I don't think you can throw a penalty on a quarterback for throwing a terrible pass. No, the fullback was out in front of him about 10 yards or so, and he had retreated maybe 20. Here's Kentucky on a 41, and they want to draw to Andy Murray, the big fullback. He got hit by the rover, but he had veered out to the right around the 35. Ben Smith had come up to help Will Jones, and that was Andy Murray, a big 236-pounder. They ran a draw on the first play, and as he came through the hole, he veered to the right toward the sideline, and they got seven yards on it, second and three. Kentucky up to the line of scrimmage on Georgia's 34. Slot to the left. Dogs in a five-man front, and they go to the tail. And Ivy Joe Hunter's going to get a first down on about the 29. Terry Webster, the linebacker, hit him. They opened a hole at the right side of our line, the left side of their line. Got about four yards and a first down. So Kentucky, after Georgia had a deep, tough loss of down penalty stuck on him on intentional grounding, and then a punt that was average, 41, no, 39. Kentucky is knocking on the door. They are in an eye. They slot it to the right. Dogs virtually in a five-man front. Glenn Four is the quarterback. Has been for a couple weeks since Dooley got hurt. He's going to go to the tail, and he got hit behind the line. Aaron Chubb, the end, came sliding off a blocker. Dogs are saying there was a fumble after the play, but it'll not be ruled that way. Boy, Chubb came off the blocker and hit him about a yard behind the line, and... The play is going to be spotted almost back on the 30. Loss of about a short yard, second and 11. Kentucky in white and blue. The dogs are in red. Kentucky on the Georgia 30 early and threatening. No score. Kentucky with three wide outs and an eye. Dogs are in a 4-4, four, four, though the backers are spread. Glenn Four, the quarterback, looking long count. Going to hand again. Little Higgs coming in, and he's slanted to the 25. Mark Higgs, a tailback. They're in a trap in there. Will Jones are over. Hit him, but he got about six yards to the 25. And Kentucky's on the Georgia 25, and it's going to be third down and about six. No score early. Kentucky is one of the best field goal kicking teams, by the way, in the whole conference. Kentucky on the Dogs 25. We did not move, though a flat pass to Tate had given us one first down a couple minutes ago. And then we backfired. Third and six. Four. Going to sprint to the right with a lot of room to the 25 and to about the 20 and out of bounds. He may have been shy of the first down when Vince Guthrie was running him out. Boy, did he have room to run, but he circled kind of wide instead of going straight ahead. He needed six, and I guess he got five. 
and it's going to be fourth and one. The quarterback could have made those yards if he had leaned inside a little. The Cats are on Georgia's 24th and one. 9.53 to go, and they're delaying now. They better watch the clock. Well, Jerry Claiborne has given them the signal to go ahead and go for it. They better watch their clock. They got two tight ends in. They've gone to a power eye. The crowd up roaring. They get the playoff, and they make a handoff. or swinging wide to the 25. First down, D. Smith, the flanker. We shove him out on about the 13. Steve Harmon, the safety, finally shoved him out. They gave it to D. Smith, the flanker, kid out of Paducah, Kentucky, and swung him wide left. And from the 20, he got close to seven and a first down. Somebody broke in off one blocker, almost got him behind the line. Well, there, were, there were about two or three opportunities to grab him before he was able to get to the line of scrimmage, but he broke free. And then Steve Harmon from Clarkston finally shoved him out of bounds and got into a shoving match with him over by the hedges. Here's that uh, freshman running back, Al Baker, in there now. And they go to Baker. He swings out, and the dogs hit him on about the 12. He got a couple or so. Will Jones are over, hit him first. John Brantley, the linebacker, hit him. Dixie Crystal Sugar scoreboard. Duke 6, Maryland nothing early in the second quarter. The Cats are sitting on the dogs 12. Second down, eight and a half. Well, not only do they have a better running tack than usual, they're using a lot of different guns today. They've already had five different people, and I'll make it six different people carry the ball. Aaron Chuck came out injured, a shoulder or a wrist or something. Dogs in a five-man front, and they run Baker and three red shirts just crack him. Larry Brown, the big tackle, probably bounced off him first. Brantley is there, and so is Bill Goldberg, the big nose guard from Tulsa, Oklahoma. No gain on the 12. Al Baker, the highly recruited kid two years ago who then broke an ankle when he got there. Big freshman running back, and we just closed the hole on him. Third down, eight and a half. Kentucky on the Georgia 12, no score. Gantz taking a little bit of time in the huddle again. Glenn Four, the quarterback. They run a man in motion. They better watch the time. And Four going to take it and drop back. Barely got the playoff. Going to throw a little screen pass left. Complete in the 15-yard line. Big Murray, the fullback, drives to about the one and a half. They threw it out in the left flat to Andy Murray. They barely got the playoff. Ben Smith, the cornerback, had to hit him in there. It'll be a first down. They got 10 yards, 10 and a half on the play. It's inside the two. Goal to go for the catch. They threw it to that big sophomore fullback. They had him floating out in the flat on the left. Wasn't really floating. He was running pretty hard when he got it, but he was five yards behind the line. Kentucky, a little toss sweep to Mark Higgs, and he cuts in, and he got a touchdown. He got half his body in. Terry Webster, the linebacker, hit him first. Then two more red jerseys were there. Higgs scored, and Kentucky leads six to nothing. 7.55 to go. Well, the penalty comes back to haunt Georgia as they gave uh, the Wildcats excellent position, giving them the ball on the 40-yard line. Kentucky leading six to nothing. And Joe Early from Oakwood, Virginia, their kicker. He's had a fine career. Now looks at an eight-man line and gets the kick up good. And the cats are on top. Seven to nothing. Timeout, 60-second network break on the Georgia Bulldog Network. Announcing an offer you'll have absolutely no interest in until 1988. No interest charges until February 24th, 1988. And no monthly payment until April 1st, 1988. That's the deal when you use the John Deere credit card or finance plan to buy a new 210, 212, 214, or 216 tractor with 10, 12, 14, or 16 horsepower and variable speed drive. A 20% down payment is required. See your local John Deere dealer soon. Offer expires November 1st. Remember, nothing runs like a deer. This is the Bible for all that you do. Nobody does it like you. Every day from New York to L.A. You keep on coming through. Cause you really make us work. Yeah, this is for you. And has a bush. St. Louis, Missouri. Georgia 
Georgia to get the ball for the second time in the game. Kentucky leads by a score of seven to nothing, going 40 yards in nine plays after the Dogs threw a pass to the fullback, which was ruled uh, as intentional grounding. Kentucky was able to get the ball with excellent field position. Here we go. Here's the kickoff. Ken Willis, for the second time, kicks off for Kentucky. They lead 7 to nothing after half a quarter. A long kick angling way down to the goal line on the far side. Rodney Hampton to the 5, ran by one or two people, but got hit on the 10 and knocked back to the 8 by five white shirts. Tony Massey, the left hand, defensively hit him first. Mark Sellers, a safety man, hit him. They mark it up on the 12. Georgia, again, in very bad field position, and the Cats are carrying it to us right now, as most of us predicted. 7-0 Kentucky lead, 7-49 in the first quarter. Georgia's Todd Wheeler over the ball, wearing an eye with two wide outs, and Kentucky's in a 6-2. Jackson going to quickly hand off to Tate. He spun around one man but couldn't go anywhere. They drove him back behind the line a couple of yards. He may have lost the yard. Oliver Barnett, a big 278-pound tackle. Scott Envers, the right guard, only weighs 243, hit him. Lars Tate now has carried the ball, Larry, four times and gained three yards. Second and ten. Got about a foot on that. The ball barely across the 12. Kentucky at this moment whipping us at the line of scrimmage. We're in a pro set. Kentucky in a little stunted five-man line. We go to Tate. He cuts in. No room. They hit him on the 17. He got about five at right tackle. Running over there with Mole and Stevens on that side. Primarily with Mole in the tight end. Went from the 12 or so to the 17. It's going to be third and a short five. Shannon the guard. Endress the guard. Kramer the linebacker hit him. All three seniors. Kentucky's got quite a few seniors on the defensive front. Kentucky's gone to a 4-4. We're third and five. We're on our own 17. Jackson fakes, wants to run to the left. Going to try to get a first down wide. 17, 20, 21 or two. He dove, and I don't know if he got it. Tony Massey, the end, strung him out over to that side. He may not have it. I don't know. Oh, boy, what a terrible spot Georgia got. Crowd doesn't like the spots. You can hear the noise. They are going to rule, I think, from up here when you look at it. He's three, four inches shy. Coaches across the way hollering that it was not a good spot. The officials are still setting it down and looking at it. Boy, is it close. No, he didn't make it. Lauren? Hey, it was uh, a bad spot, in my opinion. Uh, he fell forward. You know, James for the first down about as good as anybody I've ever seen and I certainly thought there was a first down but they moved it back moving it back some moving it back some is sort of standard in those situations but they went back uh, more than the length of the football and Georgia missed the first down by about two inches and now we're in another bad kicking position the last time our punter was all the way back at the end of the end zone now Hester standing on his own seven yard line seven to nothing Kentucky six twenty eight to go and the Cats are going to put eight on the line, load it up, see if they can bother. Fourth down and inches on our own 22. They're coming after him, and he barely got it off. And the kick hits on a Kentucky 47 and bounces sideways. Nate Lewis downs it. Boy, he barely got it off. Three guys came down the middle and almost walked right up his chest. Boy, they brought 10 people that time. They just brought the whole gang. And we'll be back after this 60-second local break on the Georgia Bulldog Network. Cofer Brothers Building Supplies remind you there's a new way to cut heating costs in your home without cutting comfort. Just install True Blue Styrofoam brand insulation from Dow. Styrofoam comes in 4x8 and 4x9 boards. And easy-to-follow literature is available to help. Get True Blue Styrofoam brand insulation at Cofer Brothers on Main Street in Tucker. That's Cofer Brothers in Tucker. Styrofoam is combustible and should be installed according to instruction. Styrofoam from the home team at Cofer Brothers. Winning by a point is still winning. Better, though, if you have more. Like the new 1988 Oldsmobile at Mitchell Motors, Georgia's oldest Oldsmobile dealer, Peachtree Industrial Boulevard in Chambly. The 88 Oldsmobiles score many points on imaginative design, solid construction, dazzling performance, and easy chair comfort. And Mitchell Motors has all the models, colors, and options you'd want. You don't have to wait for the calendar to say 1988 to start enjoying an 88 Oldsmobile. See Mitchell Motors, Peachtree Industrial Boulevard, just inside the perimeter. A 
questionable penalty against Georgia gave Kentucky good position for their first touchdown, and now a questionable spot has given Kentucky good field position once again. Kentucky with Higgs and Murray, they're running backs. Glenn Four going to toss it back out to Higgs. They're running back. He cuts in the tackle over the 50 to our 47. Got about six yards. They kicked our defensive end out, and he went inside of him and got about six. Beasley hit him, and Andy Dotson, the defensive guard, hit him. Second down, four. Pause 10 seconds here for station identification. Kuppenheimer Men's Clothiers, America's number one value clothier for men, sponsors University of Georgia football on AM 750 WSB Atlanta. Kentucky with a big offensive line. Now they're in an eye with three wideouts. We're in a 4-3. And they go to Higgs and they run a draw. He's over a 45. We hit him on the 44. Not quite a first down. Mark Higgs again, a little five foot seven inch, 186-pound senior from Owensboro, Kentucky. Brantley hit him as he came to the hall. And Jim Hickey, the number two tackle on the left, was holding on to him. He got four yards, third and one. The Cats controlling the ball, and the Cats lead seven to nothing. And we're down to 5.07 in the quarter. And they're controlling the line of scrimmage. In fact, they're controlling it both ways. Kentucky coming up. Cover split wide to the right. The only wide out. Two tight ends. Six-man front. Higgs going in. Dove over and got about three or four as he was being hit in midair by Terry Webster. Mark Higgs jumped at right guard and right tackle. Our left side and got the first down. First down inside the 41, and the Cats are proving plenty tough. Lauren? Larry, Kentucky is a tailback-oriented offensive kind of team. They just keep running that tailback, but every now and then they'll hit you with a big player try, and the guy you got to keep your eye on is number 88, Charlotte Darrington, who has great speed for a tight end, exceptional tight end. We're in a five-man front. Kentucky puts Baker, the other running back, in motion to the right. And coming back to throw is Glenn Poor. And Poor is going to try to throw a long bound down the left side. He almost overthrew him. He caught it in the air. Touchdown. He dropped it and caught it in midair. D. Smith. We had him covered. He threw it a little far. It hit D. Smith's hands. Bounced up in the air. And he and the backs were falling. And he caught it parallel to the ground while he was still in the air. He caught it twice. Once off his hands. And then caught it falling down in Georgia's in deep bad and very very serious trouble here long bomb and he was totally covered in fact our defensive back Mark Vincent led him into the end zone and turned to jump with him he dropped it in the air and caught it before he hit the ground 13 to nothing Kentucky leads Worley to try the extra point set it down and the kick is up the kick is good watch a possible penalty on the play may have been a penalty on the play four minutes and 18 seconds and let's get the call the cats may have to do it again bill allen is their holder he has not been the holder the main holder all year is hurt and gone today 13 to nothing kentucky on a long bomb and on a short drive and won't let us move. Got a procedure penalty on the Cats. It's probably going to make them kick it again from slightly farther out, though that doesn't amount to much normally. 13 to nothing. Ball was really thrown well, but it was covered well, too, Lauren. Well, now there's some concern on the sideline because you can't blame everything on the officials, but the Mark Vincent felt he was pushed from behind or at least nudged, and he had position on the ball, but when it bounces around like that, the receiver can come back and get it, and that's exactly what happened. Joey Worley tries the extra point from back farther, and the kick is good again. The Cats lead 14 to nothing. Timeout late in the quarter, 60-second local break on the Georgia Bulldog Network. They're coming to a Hardee's near you, the California Raisin. And now, for a limited time at participating Hardee's, buy any two Rise and Shine biscuits or any dessert and get a cool California Raisin figurine for only 99 cents. There are four in all, a new one each week. California Raisin figurines, only 99 cents each at Hardee's, where we're out to win you over. Weekend! Days off, don't wanna work no more Gonna take my time, now that it's mine And I don't wanna be where there's no Coca-Cola This is the life, these are the real things And you're the heart of it, every day In every way, Coca-Cola's a part of your life Oh, and Coca-Cola's a part of your life You can't beat the feeling Coca-Cola 
Coca-Cola Classic. Dogs trail 14 to nothing. Uh, same situation as last week, but there's a big difference. Last week, Georgia demonstrated early they could move the football. That hasn't happened thus far today. The dogs only have 13 yards on the ground thus far with time running out in the first quarter. So the cats have been very, very stubborn, and the dogs are in a world of trouble. Yeah, maybe worse than that. Ken Willis, high, short kick, angle to the far right side. Hampton took it over on the 13 and couldn't pull his leg away and got hit up on the 24. Georgia upset with the touchdown pass for two reasons. One of them was there was movement in the Kentucky line before the ball was ever thrown. Lauren, what do you got? Lauren's not there. Dixie Crystal Sugar scoreboard in the middle of the second quarter, Maryland 7, Duke 6. And in the second quarter, Iowa 14 and Purdue nothing. 14 to nothing Kentucky late in the quarter. The Cats now are going to really hit us at that line of scrimmage, which they always do anyway, but now they got room to play and monkey around, and is it going to be tough? We go to the tailback. He drives at left guard, and he got almost three and a half or four. Tate came driving up in there. And from the 24, give him four to the 28. Reese the tackle over there. Andrus the guard on that side. Jeff Kramer, the linebacker on that side, hit him. 14 and up in Kentucky. Dogs in an eye, two men split. Kentucky's been spotted a two touchdown lead. Here comes Jackson running the option. He's gonna pitch it out to Tate. No blocking and they hit him on the 29. Be anything, he got a yard. Oliver Barnett, big 278 pound sophomore tackle was the guy that played the blocker well. He beat our guard off and knocked him down third and five. Well, Georgia's come out today. They've tried to spread Kentucky out a little bit. Naturally, they're punching away inside the tackles, but they've also tried to spread to Kentucky, and thus far, they haven't been able to do it. That time they ran the uh, the option play, the pitch went to Tate. That's his seventh carry now. He's gained 13 yards. Tate and Hampton are the two backs now. We took the full backs out. Kentucky's in a five and kind of an offset three linebacker setup. Pass out in front to Hampton, complete in the 35. They hit him right away in the 37. Jackson under pressure, dumped it out in the left flat to one of the backs in front of him. Little seven-yarder on the first down. Mack the cornerback and Kramer the linebacker hit him. But as you sit here and look at this thing, we're only biting it off in little tiny pieces. Lauren? Larry, uh, the difference between this game and last week, I don't think you can expect to pound on Kentucky in the fourth quarter and get the advantage like Georgia got against Vanderbilt. I'll have more later. Kentucky comes up on a 6-2, and we give it to the Hampton on a trap. Five! Ten! He broke off at the 50 to the 45. They caught him from behind on the 40. They should have had him after the first six or seven strides, and he pulled away. And Hampton went from the 36 and down to the Cats' 40. Sellers, the alternating free safety, had to get him. They had Hampton stop, and suddenly he was gone through, which he has done to other people this year. Dogs driving for the first time, but trailing 14 to nothing. Two tight ends, one wide out, and Kentucky's in a 6-2. Jackson looking at it, going to give to Hampton. He cut in and leaned two different ways and got two and a half yards. I don't know if he got threes around a 37 or so. Vic Adams, sophomore right guard. First guy that hit him. He got it down to the 36 and a half. Give him four, second and six. Lauren? Against an aggressive defense, and you can see uh, Kentucky really shooting in there, firing uh, in the gaps. Uh, you want to play a patient brand of football, and then when they get ahead by two touchdowns as they are, that can change things, and that sometimes can lead to mistakes. Five-man front. Jackson bootlegs out to the right with a blocker. He's going to run, and he got caught from behind, and he fumbled the ball and rolled to the 30, and Kentucky got the ball. Jackson got hit from behind as he kept it and turned inside to run. Jackson coughed it up, and the Wildcats are really dominating this thing now. Jerry Reese, the big tackle, fell on the ball. Kentucky's ball to 31. Anders, a guy that hit him from behind as he turned to run. He really had room in front of himself. May have delayed a little in turning in the run. Big fumble, and Georgia's first drive of the day has been fumbled away. Kentucky leads 14 to nothing. The Cats up to the line. 
We're in a five-man front. They're in a pro set. They pitch it out to Higgs. Higgs shoves a blocker, comes outside, and the red shirts hit him up around the 34. He only got three yards. He's that little short, chunky running back. Brantley, the linebacker, hit him. This is second to seven. Kentucky's worst field position of the day, Larry. Yeah. And it's pretty darn good, really. We drove it 45 yards or so. Now we're down to 70 seconds in the quarter and trailing 14 to nothing. Their center is only listed at 6'2 and 270. And he looks like Dusty Rhodes. Dogs in a 5-3. Kentucky long count with a slot. Long count. Quarterback Glenn Four shifts the backs. And we blitz and we get him behind the line of the 26. Brantley, the linebacker, just roared straight in there and Keep in mind what the score is. It's 14 to nothing. And you got about a half a minute now to go in the quarter. Kentucky now is back there on their own 28-yard line, third down and about 12. Lauren? He saw four, the quarterback, looked to see who got him. He didn't know who it was until he got up off the ground. He wanted to see where John Brantley came from. You know, he had a discussion with some of his offensive linemen in the huddle after that. But for Brantley, he surely has... He said. They're down at 12, and they're going to run a draw, and Big Murray drives to the 36 or 7. He went from flag down late, watch the call, flag late after the call, as Big Murray drove it up about eight yards, and there will be a penalty here. With that last play, Brantley moved into the fifth position on the Georgia career primary tackle list. He now has 170 career tackles. No sign on the penalty yet. Somebody saw something long after the play piled on the ground, and they're still discussing it, and neither team has retreated yet. 14 to nothing, and the teams are still standing around the officials. A quarter should end here while the discussion is on. It probably has ended, according to the scoreboard clock it has. And now another official joins them. I still don't know what they're going to do. Let's check the penalty. Penalty on Kentucky. Unsportsmanlike conduct, 15-yarder. The quarter should be over, but let's watch and see. All the way down to the 22. They haven't uh, lined up in punt formation yet. It's fourth and 20. The quarter should be over. Well, Larry, apparently they're taking that penalty from the, where the play ended. It looks that way, yeah. Otherwise, they stepped off an odd number. And now, yes, that's the end of the quarter. Kentucky leads 14 and nothing 60 second network break on the Georgia Bulldog Network. The people at Chick-fil-A are good sports once again and are proud to sponsor another year of Georgia Bulldog football. Chick-fil-A has become a Georgia tradition. That unbeatable boneless breast of chicken sandwich and Chick-fil-A nuggets are what big dog fans love to eat at game time or any time. So run over to your nearest Chick-fil-A restaurant and you'll be ready to tackle an afternoon of great football. After all, it's okay for the Bulldogs to be hungry when they hunker down, but not you. When you need top quality parts fast, you need your Napa Auto Parts store. With over 6,500 stores located across the country, chances are there's a Napa Auto Parts store near you. Every Napa store has access to over 100,000 different parts for both domestic and import cars. And if they don't have your part in stock, they'll get it for you, usually within 24 hours. So when you need auto parts, why drive all over town? Go to your nearby Napa Auto Parts store. Kentucky 14, Georgia nothing, and Kentucky with 96 total yards. Georgia has 68, so the yardage is in favor of Kentucky, but not by a monstrous amount when you consider the score. Lauren? Uh, Phil, when I signaled you all there before the end of the quarter, I was just going to let you know that it was a dead ball foul, and that Kentucky would have to kick and, and take the penalty, too, but you all already had seen that. Kentucky punting Jay Tesher in a punt formation. We almost got him from one side. A bad kick, high and short. They kicked it on the Georgia bench. Very bad out around the 36. Bad kick. They had been back with long yardage on their own 22. He stood on his 11, kicked an 18-yarder, and Kentucky has put the dogs in good field position here just outside the 40, barely outside the 40. Well, 
first piece of a break as far as the dogs are concerned. And George up to the line. We're in an eye with two wide outs. Jackson with a long count looking. Going to quickly hand it to Hampton and no room there at all. Two yards maybe at left guard. He tried to slant in. He had Alfonso Ellis in front of him. Scott and versus the guard on the right side of the line. Ball in the 39. They got both of those guys in the guards. Adams and Inverse who normally line up on the right side. Game was only a yard for Hampton. Not so sure about the spot on the punt, Larry. It looked like it went out around the 36. I thought that's where he stood. Second and nine. Jackson going to give it to Hampton at the tackle. They hit him on the 35 and a half. He got not quite four. The Cats linebackers coming in. Shannon, the nose guard, hanging on. Donnie Gardner, the tackle, reaching as he went in. Got an official's time here for something. Ball is on the 36 or just inside the 36. Kentucky's got either a man hurt or an equipment change. They're taking a linebacker, Christian Ault, out. The officials are asking for a sub. And Randy Holleran is coming in. This was an official's time. Georgia's third and five on the 35 and a half. Dogs in their best and so far their only field position of this football game. Trailing 14 to nothing. We're in an eye. Got two men split wide. Kentucky's in a 5-2. Jackson runs the option, turns inside, and they rack him shy of a first down on the 31 and a half. Had that back trailing outside. Jackson turned inside to run. They hit him on the 31 and a half. Got about four, fourth and one. Shannon and Kramer hit him. Dixie Crystal Sugar scoreboard. North Carolina State 7. Clemson nothing. End of the first quarter. Fourth down a yard. Georgia in a gambling thing here, but getting beat 14 to nothing. They've got to have the first down. Dogs up to the line. So the Cats put seven men on the line. We're in a power eye, and we need a yard. He fakes, and he pitches to Nate Lewis. Lewis down the sideline, got about 10 yards. They ran him out of the 20. Nate Lewis on the flanker off a power eye. One of our backs faked a dive in the middle, and we ran a flanker. And Nate Lewis got 11 yards. Ron Robinson, the safety, and Ron Mack, the cornerback, got him. It'll be a first down, Georgia, on the Kentucky 20. And Kentucky was totally convinced with Georgia in that power eye that they were just going to come at it with brute force, and Georgia totally tricked them on that play. Georgia on the 20 for the first time, threatening to score. Kentucky in a 5-2. We got Osborne in motion coming back. Trying to get a block in the corner. Jackson's going to run and get four or five yards, and they knock him down on the 16 as he was going farther and farther off to the right side. It took two men to take care of one of those big lines. I don't think and Jackson... Uh, Jackson Jackson's actually, slow coming up. Yeah, he, he was going to throw the ball at first, and uh, when Kentucky had a defensive end fall down on his backside, that's when Jackson decided to run. He's all right, though. Trainers are coming off. They had run out there. Second yeah. down. Well, we had them all going out there. Warren Morris and yeah. Steve Bryan and Mike Dillon were all running out. Now George has decided to take a timeout. Jackson coming off with time call. Kentucky leads 14 to nothing and a 60-second network break on the Georgia Bulldog Network. Georgia families are on the move, and State Farm is there. Into Augusta. Whenever you move to a new town, you're in for a lot of work. Finding a new bank, new doctor, new school. But one new neighbor will be easy to find. Your new State Farm agent. Because just about anywhere you move, a State Farm agent is there to give you the same good neighbor service you got from your State Farm agent back home. And like a good neighbor. For your auto, home, life, and health. State Farm is there. Norman? Yes, Mother? There's a Animal in our living room. It's Buzz McKenzie getting ready for Bud Light's Halloween bash here at the Psycho Mansion. Oh, I love it when you say bash, Norman. Mother, there'll be plenty of Bud Light, and the winner of Bud Light Psycho Sweepstakes will be Spuds McKenzie's guest. Norman, when can I boogie with Spud? After I fix the shower, Mother. This Halloween, stock up on Bud Light. Everything else is just alike. <laughs> Second down, second and six for the Georgia Bulldogs, and an opportunity to pick up some points against Kentucky. The Wildcats leading 14 to nothing very early in the second quarter. Lauren? Well, uh, 
uh, James Jackson fell on the football, so he got the wind knocked out of him a little bit. But he's okay. That was the reason he was uh, waving the trainers off. It wasn't his shoulder that's been hurt or his knee. And he just got the wind knocked out of him a little bit falling on the ball. Second down, a long six. We're on the Kentucky 16. We're in an eye with a slot. Cat's line moving around a little. And we go to Hampton. He started the left tackle, and they just ate him up on the 14. He got two yards. They are blocking us at the line of scrimmage. Shelly Anderson is in there at one of the tackles, by the way, along with Scott Adams. Shannon, uh, the nose guard, Reese, the right tackle hit him, though Shannon is not technically a nose guard, but boy, he's a big guy and a lot bigger than the 253 he's listed. Number 91 is a big guy, and so is 92. Third down, four on the Kentucky 14. Big play. Two men out on the right, one in motion. They go to Hampton. He got a block 14. 10. The man hung on. They yanked him down on the nine. Boy, he almost broke it, pulling his legs. Rodney Hampton got five yards when he needed four, and it'll be goal to go. 14 to nothing, Kentucky leading. Ron Mack, the right cornerback, was a guy that would not drop his foot. <laughs> Georgia nine yards away from getting on the board, and we're early. We've gone three minutes into the second quarter. We're in an eye. One wide out, Lewis. Little toss sweep to Hampton, trying to find a block. He pulled his legs through two of them, and then two more got him on a six and a half. As it turned out, there were five men there, and they finally got him on a six, close to the sideline, so he only got three. Christian Alta linebacker, Mack a corner, Robinson the free safety, we're hitting him, Jerry Reese the right tackle, grabbing at him, Georgia on a Kentucky six, second down, goal to go, trailing 14 to nothing. We're in an eye, Nate Lewis a wide out, but he's only three yards out, now Lewis is in motion to the wide side of the field, Cats are in a 6-4, we go to Hampton, he leaned in and tried to crawl more, and they hit him on the three. They hit him on the five, but he didn't have his knees down, and I think he crawled another yard and a half. Now you got a big third down on the three. Third down, three for a touchdown. Kentucky leading 14 to nothing. Chenault and Kramer, the Kentucky linebackers, made that last stop. Crowd comes up roaring. They want points. We're in an eye with Ellis and Hampton. The backs, Lewis in motion against an eight-man line. They give it to Rodney Hampton. Somebody hit him, and he fell on the one. He did not make it. From behind, Jerry Reese, the senior tackle, a big kid, 269, and Kramer, the linebacker, hit him. In fact, they put it back on the one and a half, and he only got a yard and a half. Fourth down, a yard and a half, and time call. Timeout, 60-second network break on the Georgia Bulldog Network. Do you think things that taste good are fattening? Ready for this? One teaspoon of sugar. Dixie Crystal Sugar has only 16 calories. Only 16? Come on. You're not using one of those substitutes, are you? Classic. Georgia has moved 39 yards in 10 plays, and the field goal team has now come on. So the dogs have elected to go for three as Steve Crumley comes on the field. And Crumley having an effective year percentage wide, kicking field goals. He is 10 out of 12. So he's one of the leaders in that department in the conference. Lauren? Well, I went down and took a look. It's uh, about two yards. So the ball is just inside the two yard stripe. So that makes it at least a yard and three quarters. And it's not a percentage gamble to try to run for it when it's uh, more than a yard or more than a yard and a half. So I think Coach Vince Dooley is making the percentage call. Georgia needs to get some points on the board. Yeah, but it shows what we think of their defense. 
They are tough, and we've got almost two yards to go. We set it down, and Crumley kicks it good. And we're on the scoreboard, but Kentucky leads 14-3. 60-second local break on the Georgia Bulldog Network. Now McDonald's salads are doing all the talking. Chicken salad, oriental, dog and chef. We we'll call some salad, call some great, great taste. I love it when McDonald's talks to me this way. Okay, every day we're tossing them fresh. Chicken salad, oriental, dog and chef. We're tossing them fresh all day. Keep talking. Get a chef salad or a chicken salad oriental for just $2.29 plus tax. Based on individual restaurant participation, prices may vary up for end October 29th. Hey, you dog fans know I'm not Kuppenheimer, but I know a quality player when I see one. Like Kuppenheimer quality. Take his 100% all wool suit for just $185. The same quality fabric, styling, and workmanship you'd expect to find in suits costing twice as much. While the dogs are driving, you drive by your nearest Kuppenheimer. In Buckhead, Jonesboro, Loganville, Norcross, North DeKalb, Roswell, and Smyrna. Georgia will kick off. Casey will kick. Kentucky's got Smith and Bolden deep waiting for it. 14 to 3. Kentucky leads by 11. Casey kicks it long. It hooks to one side. It's taken on a one yard line by D. Smith to the 10 to the 15 to the 20. And they fake the reverse. We knocked him down on the 23. But boy, we had a man chasing the reverse, too. Tardis got him and Steve Harmon got him. Kentucky fake the big wide reverse with some guy that could really run and one of our defensive backs, Mike Bowen, really came after him out in the middle of the field. All right, Kentucky now on the 24. In their own territory, they lead 14 to 3. They have flat played us tough. Wildcats up to the line. They're in an eye and a slot. George is in a 5-2. Our linebacker's moving a little. Quarterback Glenn Four coming back. Throws on a run to Higgs, completing the 27. We hit him up close to the 35. Mark Higgs, the tailback. Brantley had to hit him. Ben Smith, the corner, hit him. Mike Guthrie, the defensive end from Lithonia, came sliding in at him and was grabbing at the quarterback's leg as he threw it. First down. Kentucky has not thrown very much this afternoon, Larry. That's only their third pass, but they've completed all three for 63 yards, and there's a touchdown in that bunch as well. They got ten and a half on that and a first down. The Cats in their own 35. George in a four-man front. They give it to Higgs. They had a hole. We close it, pull him down on the about the 39. Mike Guthrie, the guy that got him from behind, and Andy Dotson, the defensive guard. Dixie Crystal Sugar scoreboard, Duke 12, Maryland 7 at the half. Second down, 6, 14 to 3. Kentucky's got an 11-point lead. Dogs have made some mistakes today and had what they feel is was one tough luck call by an official, if not two. I slot left, five-man front, and they're going to give it to Al Baker, and we crashed in off that side and hit him at the line. Mike Guthrie primarily. That's young Al Baker, the reserve tailback, who's never been the same since he broke his ankle the first month or so he got in that school. They leave it right where it is, up on the 39. He may have lost a foot. It's third down, six or six and a half. He's having a tough day. He's carried the ball three times and hasn't gained anything yet. Boy, was he something in high school. And the whole world tried to recruit him. Kentucky on their own 38 and a half. Third down and about seven now. They put a man in motion off a slot. Four back to throw. A little screen in the right to the big fullback. And the linebackers hit him. Terry Webster hit him first. Through that side screen to Murray, and Webster really hit him. And then Guthrie and Brantley, who were charging on the screen, trying to put pressure on four. Terry Webster hit him. He completed the pass in the right flat, but he lost about seven, eight yards on the completion. So Jay Tesser will punt for Kentucky on fourth and 13. Nate Lewis is deep for the dogs. Tesser kicks beautiful. High, high punt. Nate takes it on the 27, and they knock him backwards and upside down three yards. Boy, did they hit him, especially Ray Gover, the flanker, who was the first man. Nate had to really look up in the sky and wait for that one. 42-yarder. 
Best fun of the game so far. 7.56 to go on the half. And television timeout, 14-3 Kentucky. 60-second local break on the Georgia Bulldog Network. Winning by a point is still winning. Better, though, if you have more. Like the new 1988 Oldsmobile at Mitchell Motors, Georgia's oldest Oldsmobile dealer, Peachtree Industrial Boulevard in Chambly. The 88 Oldsmobile score many points on imaginative design, solid construction, dazzling performance, and easy chair comfort. And Mitchell Motors has all the models, colors, and options you'd want. You don't have to wait for the calendar to say 1988 to start enjoying an 88 Oldsmobile. See Mitchell Motors, Peachtree Industrial Boulevard, just inside the perimeter. Weekends, days off, don't want to work no more. Gonna take my time now that it's mine. And I don't want to be where there's no coca gone. This is the life. These are the real things. You're the heart of it. Every day, in every way, coca cola is a part of it. Coca-Cola Classic. All right, the dogs huddle. Come up to the line, driving toward the bookstore. Kentucky and White looking at the red shirts. We're on our own 26. Little Jackson, the quarterback, with an eye. And going to fake to the tail, back to throw. Hard to the right side. He threw it 20 yards nowhere, way down by the Kentucky bench. The receiver had hooked around on our 45, and the ball. 43. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Georgia Bulldog Network. Kuppenheimer Men's Clothiers, America's number one value clothier for men, sponsors University of Georgia football on AM 750 WSB Atlanta. Todd Wheeler over the ball, second down. Georgia on their own 26. Jackson fakes to the tail, bootlegs right, stops, throws back to Tate on the left side with the blocker to the 25 to the 30, and Tate got hit on a 34, shy of a first down. The play got about eight. Chris Talbert, a freshman cornerback, played it well, and broken field, open field tackle with Lars Tate. Jackson bootleg right, stopped and turned and threw back to the left flat. And Tate had a blocker, and the blocker helped him behind him or a guy was going to get him. Third and two, Georgia trailing 14 to three, exactly the middle of the second quarter. Kentucky in a six-man line. We toss it to Tate. Tate got hit from behind and went down. He might not have a first down of the 35 and a half. Tony Massey an end. Partially off the blocker, pulled him down from behind. Tate had a hole at the right tackle and couldn't get in there fast enough. He gained two, but we're going to have to measure, and boy, is it close. We lost one measurement by a couple of inches. It had something to do with the score about 15, 20 minutes ago. Here we are, 7.02, left and a half, and they're going to measure with a ball in the 35 and a half. Going to be shy four or five inches. 14 to three. We don't have a touchdown yet. And we got down inside there too. And on fourth down, we went for a field goal because they're just too tough to run against. Which the team was warned about and warned about and everybody else. We all tried to warn the fans all week what kind of a thing this was going to be. Seven minutes in the half. Joey Hester into punt. Jimmy O'Neill is the safety man for Kentucky. He's got two blockers about 15 yards up in front of him. Fourth down and inches. Kentucky doesn't run everybody, and Hester gets a good kick. Long spiral. O'Neill takes it on the 21, and the dogs hit him right away. Covered it very, very well. Nate Lewis, one of the first men down there. And Brent Collins, the linebacker. 43-yard kick. Good kick by Hester, and we may have time called here. I think we do. 14-3 Kentucky. 6.37 and a half and a 60-second local break on the Georgia Bulldog Network. You can score big this season with fine menswear from Kuppenheimer Men's Clothiers, America's number one value clothier for men. At Kuppenheimer, you'll appreciate the care and detail that go into every garment. The Cup team manufactures suits, sport coats, and slacks in the USA and backs them with an unconditional suit-yourself guarantee that assures your satisfaction. Come into Kuppenheimer today. Buckhead, Jonesboro, Loganville, Norcross, North DeKalb, Roswell, and Smyrna. They're coming to a Hardee's near you, the California Raisins. 
And now, for a limited time at participating parties, buy any two Rise and Shine biscuits or any dessert and get a cool California raisin figurine for only 99 cents. There are four in all, a new one each week. California raisin figurines, only 99 cents each at Hardee's, where we're out to win you over. Kentucky on their own 22. Glenn Four still the quarterback. They got a big slot left side. We were in a six-man line. Now we pull off. Higgs goes in motion. Glenn Four, the quarterback. We blitz him. Dumps it down the right flat. Complete on the 22-yard line, and we knock him down to the 29. He had Mark Higgs, who had gone in motion and curled over there. Terry Webster, the linebacker, the first man that hit him. Guthrie came across. Hargett came up in there. Ben Smith, rather. But that flat pass got eight yards. Second down, it's on the 29 and a half. Second and two. Kentucky leads 14 to three. And the one time the dogs got down really close on fourth down and less than two yards for a touchdown, we were afraid to go in there with it. They are just too tough to block at the moment. We're in a 5-2. Four, slot left, puts a man in motion right. Turns and gives it to Little Higgs. And Higgs goes to the left tackle, and we hit him, but he might have a first down. Mark Higgs, that little short, chunky running back, slanting right. McClendon hit him. Goldberg, Vince Guthrie hit him. McClendon may have met him head on. First down on the 32 and a half. He got almost three yards close to the 33. Cats lead by 11, 14 to 3. What's the yardage, Bill? Uh, Kentucky now has 50 yards rushing, and Higgs has 28 of those uh, yards on eight carries to this point. Kentucky over the line, first down on their own, 33, and they still lead by 11 points. They run Higgs in motion over to a loaded side. Four going to throw over there. Threw it too high, incomplete. Had Higgs wide over in the left flat, and Four with a little bit of pressure by McClendon threw it high. That is his first incompleted pass. However, he did throw the one for minus seven yards, but he's still five out of six throwing for 65 yards thus far in the ball game. So he's had a good day throwing the football percentage-wise. And we don't have much on the ground, do we? At this point, Georgia has, well, since they called the uh, intentional grounding minus 28 yards, Georgia now has 58 yards on the ground. Second down, 10. Kentucky on their own 33. They lead 14 to 3, a little better than five minutes in the half. Two wide outs. Pro set four going to throw. Four dumps it across. Complete to the tight end on the 37. Going to get maybe a first down on the 43. Martin Pennington. Big junior tight end on a delayed drag pattern over the middle. Miles Smith had to hit him right away. Big Goldberg came up. And the play was just about 10, and they'll measure on the 43-yard line. Getting a little late in the half. Kentucky leads 14 to 3, and a measurement. Kentucky's mixed up their plays well throughout the ball game. They have uh, thrown a three out of four plays on this particular drive. As they stretch out the chain, they're going to be shy of a first down, Larry. It looks like by about two or three inches. Yeah, just barely a couple of inches. Kentucky will be third down an inch or two, 14 to three, though they lead. They are not pounding Georgia as far as uh, the yardage is concerned. It's been field position that's made the big difference in this ball game, and a couple of plays have really put the Wildcats in a good position, and they've capitalized to their credit. So the Cats only need inches on this beautiful fall afternoon. Sanford Stadium. The crowd finally showed up about, well, 81,000 or so. I don't think we got the capacity in here because of television. Clock starts to run. George has been down there close only one time. Kentucky scored on a bomb today when the guy dropped it in midair, and as he fell, he caught it again. They go up into a power eye, and the tailback, we hit him, but I think he fell forward and got a foot. Mark Higgs. Somebody just blitzed. Brantley came in underneath early and hit him behind the line, but he was jumping from up here. He got a foot or two. I don't know if he'll measure or not. No, it's a first down. Lauren? Well, I was just going to say, it depends on the spot, and uh, he, he fell forward enough to get the first down. But it was very, very close, uh, but it was obvious. The officials could see from where they were that he had about a, the length of the football over the line. So it'll be first down on the 43 and a half. He got just about a yard, though not quite that much. Now Kentucky has one wide out only. 
We come up in a six. Glenn Ford, the quarterback, sprinting around to the left side. Going to throw long, way too long. Poor pass out of bounds on the far side. D. Smith, the flanker, going down that side. Dogs had Harmon and Vincent both covering him. That's the second really uh, poorly thrown pass of the game. Both quarterbacks now have thrown one, really thrown one where nobody was. But the little guy Jackson threw one before where either the receiver was wrong or he was wrong. There was just nobody around anywhere at all. But you never can tell now as to whether the receiver ran the right route. Second down, Kentucky leads 14 to 3. They've got the ball on their own 44. in what amounts to a wing T. One guy was out of position. He runs in the left in motion and Glenn Four flag down. Four's going to run. Another flag down. He comes up and throws a long bomb and one of our men fell down and they catch it for a touchdown but there's flags all over the place back there. Kentucky had a man in motion, Larry. It was a man that was out of position. Charlie Parrington, the safety, was going to catch a bomb. Our safety man went down. Now they're calling holding. In fact, there's three flags down now. You could see the penalty flags flying long before the play, and our safety man fell with the receiver, though they bumped each other. Kentucky would have scored on that play on a bomb. That play was similar to what Virginia did to us early. Holding on Kentucky, and there's no argument off the cat bench or anything. Everybody saw the flags flying. Kentucky's penalized back to the 34. They'll be long yardage here on second down. Lauren. Well, they might have been in motion, too. I don't know. There were a lot of flags, but one thing is for sure, you can see how Darrington is a dangerous player. He was that tight end. He can go deep, and often does go deep, Larry. So he's a player that you have to keep your eye on. He's Kentucky's leading receiver, a big, strong back, uh, in rather with great speed. He's from Tifton, Georgia. They put a man in motion to the left side. And four drops back to pass again. Looks, dumps it over the line, complete to the big fullback. Murray on the 45 to the 50. We hit him on our 45. He carries four men to the 43. With long yardage, that big fullback caught a short pass over the middle and got about 23 yards or so on the first down. Took a lot of red shirts to bring him down. Goldberg, one of them, riding his back, arm the safety man. 2 and Kentucky's driving. They've come to the dog 43 and they lead 14 to 3. Well, that fullback is really tough for Kentucky. Not only uh, can he run with the football, but he's a pretty devastating blocker. One wide out, two running backs, a little toss sweep to Higgs. Higgs wanted to stop and cut. We wouldn't let him do it. He lost the yard. Mark Higgs. Brantley was the second man there. Somebody on the bottom was playing the blocker well. Guthrie's there. Both Guthrie's are there. Mike and Vince Guthrie both there on the play. Officials uh, give me our loss back to the 44. Second and about 11. Andy Murray's kind of like a small compact tank, isn't he, Larry? When he catches Boy. that ball, it takes about four people to, to finally ride him down. You can see the width of the shoulders. He's 6'1", 236. Second and 11. The Cats on the Georgia 44 were in a four-man front. Glenn Four wants to sprint to the left side. Fires a low pass complete. The receiver fell down but hung on to the 26 of Jimmy O'Neill. Was not a short fighter and he whipped that ball down to the dogs 26. And the Cats got a big first down. They are coming down the field. We have been unable to come down the field today. And Larry, they're doing it on the, uh, on the arm of the quarterback now. They are really throwing the football. All the way to Georgia's 26. Georgia in deep, bad trouble. Trailing 14 to 3, getting late in the half, 247 and the clock running. Two running backs, one wide out, four sprinting to the right to throw, looking. Fires complete down to the 18. He threw it low, but Mark Higgs, uh, Ivy Joe Hunter rather caught it on his knees and hung on. Ben Smith, our cornerback, was right there, but they got about seven yards, almost eight. Larry, he's now completed nine out of 11 passes against Georgia for 127 yards, and he's, he's thrown all variety of passes in this particular football game. He's sprinting out now. He's just taking it, running left or right, just sprinting with a blocker or so. Now they're in an eye with a slot, second down and about three, and they give it to Al Baker. He bounced off a tackler and fought for a first down to the 13. Big young Al Baker, we hit him right on the hole and should have stopped him, but he bounced off somehow. And he got six tough yards and a first down. Kentucky close to scoring again. Ben Smith, the cornerback from Warner Robins, had to hit him. 
14 to 3 Kentucky they lead 11 boy have they dominated us and in our own stadium here and again a real sign was coming down close and figuring that we couldn't score so we went for the field goal they've thrown seven times on this drive completing five slot left with an eye and it goes to that Baker he's at the tackle he cuts in he goes to the nine and he gets four young Al Baker from Kate is Kentucky all world in high school and then broke his ankle right away game was five second and five or five and a half timeout Kentucky Giles hit him Will Jones are over hit him 90 seconds and a half 30 second local break here on the Georgia Bulldog Network Winning by a point is still winning. Better, though, if you have more. Like the new 1988 Oldsmobile at Mitchell Motors, Georgia's oldest Oldsmobile dealer, Peachtree Industrial Boulevard in Shambly. The 88 Oldsmobile score many points on imaginative design, solid construction, dazzling performance, and easy chair comfort. And Mitchell Motors has all the models, colors, and options you'd want. You don't have to wait for the calendar to say 1988 to start enjoying an 88 Oldsmobile. See Mitchell Motors, Peachtree Industrial Boulevard, just inside the perimeter. Kentucky sensing the opportunity to go in and take a big lead over Georgia as they, the entire team has gone over toward the sidelines. We see former uh, Kentucky great Jeff Van Note on the uh, sidelines. Yeah. And uh, you can tell, you were talking about Baker, you can tell they think a lot of him when they put him in in the situation as they get down close. And, of course, now the dogs really have their, their back against the wall. They must stop Kentucky in this situation or they go into the into the half in a, in a very uh, desperate position. Baker has given Mark Higgs, their number one running back, the little short scooty guy, pretty good rest. Higgs is back in there. Now Higgs breaks in motion out to the right. Four sprinting to the right, throws a pass, and intercepted out of the flat. Barely we took it away from Mark Higgs, and he yanked him down. Will Jones, the rover, saved. It was almost a touchdown over in the right flat on the nine-yard line. He took it out of Higgs' hands. Will Jones, the rover, saved what could have been a touchdown. He sprinted out to the right, threw it 15 yards in front of himself over to the right sideline, and Will Jones tore it out of his hands, and then the running back yanked him down. Dogs get the ball on their own 14, and we barely saved ourselves. Dogs had to have a big play there, and they got the biggest one you could get. That is getting the football. Georgia's ball very late in the half now on their own 14. Run a toss sweep to Hampton. No blocking. They just eat him up on the 15, and they only got a yard. Lauren, what do you got? Will Jones really fought for that ball, Larry. He had good position on the ball, but he just reached around, stepped in front, moved his body a little forward, but the uh, receiver tried to fight back and uh, take the ball away from him, so he did a good job of fighting for the ball and keeping control of it. Second down, nine. We hardly got two feet on the play. We're in an eye. 54 seconds and a half. Quick handoff to the fullback, Ellis, who veers out to the right side of the 20, to the 25, pulls a man to the 30, to 31 or two, and out of bounds, up in that vicinity of the 30. That was David Johnson, a cornerback, holding on to him. Clock may have stopped with 43 seconds. Ran Ellis for the first time, and Ellis managed to get a first down just across the 30 where he stepped out. Dixie Crystal Sugar scoreboard, Illinois 7, Michigan State nothing at the end of the first quarter. Keep an eye on that one. Scores courtesy of the RFC. They said he didn't get out of bounds because that clock is uh -oh. still rolling. Now, uh, now they start the clock, you're right, ball in the 31. Late in the half, Little Jackson sprints left, stops, going to throw a long bomb, and he overthrew him incomplete. And now a flag down on the 35-yard line. Robinson and Mack were covering. Nate Lewis going down the side. Kentucky had it beautifully covered. Let's see what the call is here with 18 seconds left in the half. Maybe on the Cats for pass interference. Jackson threw it long down the left side. 35 yards or so. It may be pass interference. There's only 18 seconds, however, in the half. Lauren? There it is, uh, pass interference, but I believe that's going to be the 15-yard penalty. It won't be uh, where the flag was thrown, but that still puts Georgia in a position with a couple of breaks. They could at least have a shot at a field goal. Dixie Crystal Sugar scoreboard. Second quarter, North Carolina State still 7-0 on Clemson. And now the dogs come up to the line, and time may be called here. And Kentucky 
will call time. Time out. 30 second local break on the Georgia Bulldog number. Hey, you dog fans know I'm not Kuppenheimer, but I know a quality player when I see one. Like Kuppenheimer quality. Take his 100% all wool suit for just $185. The same quality fabric, styling, and workmanship you'd expect to find in suits costing twice as much. While the dogs are driving, you drive by your nearest Kuppenheimer in Buckhead, Jonesboro, Loganville, Norcross, North DeKalb, Roswell, and Smyrna. Just 18 seconds left, and Georgia still has to travel 55 yards, so you can look for some sort of a long play. As Georgia did try to go long on the previous play, and pass interference was the call, and the, the ball was overthrown on that play, so the dogs at least picked up 15 yards. Lauren? Well, Phil, they just need about a 25 or so yard pass, so I think they might just, uh, I don't know, they may come down, take the sideline route, but they may come over the middle and go the old jump ball route, just try to get a lot of people around the ball, hope they come up with it, and then have time to call timeout, kick the field goal. Martini three Kentucky time for a couple of plays in the half Kentucky's gone on a three-man line what is commonly known as a prevent defense Jackson back to throw got good time looking looking he's gonna run and they knock him down he goes down and fumbles there's a flag down they hit him on the 49 he decided to run Jerry Reese the cat tackle one of the first men that hit him he recovered the fumble checked the penalty with eight seconds Let's check who the penalty was. It was apparently on the dogs. Jackson didn't didn't throw. He decided to run. He got up five, six yards, fumbled and lost it. The penalty would have been on the dogs. Kentucky will decline it and take it with time for one play. Dixie Crystal Sugar Scoreboard, Iowa 21, Purdue 7 at the half. Duke 12, Maryland 7 at the half. Pittsburgh 10, Navy 3 in the third quarter. Kentucky 14-3. Set time for a play, and Glenn Ford decides he'll pass. Their quarterback dumps it to that big Murray, the fullback on the 50 complete, and he gets 10, 11 more yards. We really wrecked him there. Ben Smith came up to help the linebacker. They got about 11 yards, 12 yards in the first down. The crowd is upset, and that's the end of the half. Kentucky leading 14 to 3. We'll be back after this 90 second local break on the Georgia Bulldog Network. Now McDonald's salads are doing all the talking. Chicken salad, Oriental, dog and chef, will cause some salad, cause some great, great taste. I love it when McDonald's talks to me this way. All day, every day, we're talking them fresh. Chicken salad, Oriental, dog and chef, we're tossing them fresh all day. Keep talking. Get a chef salad or a chicken salad oriental for just $2.29 plus tax. Based on individual restaurant participation, prices may vary. Offer ends October 29th. Cooper Brothers Building Supplies reminds you there's a new way to cut heating costs in your home without cutting comfort. Just install True Blue Styrofoam brand insulation from Dow. Styrofoam comes in 4x8 and 4x9 boards. And easy to follow literature is available to help. Get True Blue Styrofoam brand insulation at Cofer Brothers on Main Street in Tucker. That's Cofer Brothers in Tucker. Styrofoam is combustible and should be installed according to instruction. Styrofoam from the home team at Cofer Brothers. Weekends, days off, don't want to work no more. Gonna take my time now that it's mine. And I don't want to be where there's no Coca Cola. This is the life. These are the real things. Coca-Cola Classic. Kentucky leading Georgia 14-3 at halftime as the Wildcats got on the board early in the ballgame when Mark Higgs went over from the one-yard line. Kentucky going 40 yards in nine plays, and there was a penalty that pushed Georgia back to their own two-yard line, an intentional grounding call that uh, set up the punt from uh, the end zone, and that gave Kentucky excellent field position, and they were able to move it back for the first score of the ballgame. Then Kentucky was able to go 53 yards in four plays when the quarterback... Glenn Four hit D. Smith with a 41-yard touchdown pass. It was an unbelievable reception in that Four 
missed the football. It was uh, deflected, and then he came up with the catch as he stayed with it, and Kentucky went up 14 to nothing on Georgia. Steve Crumley came back and kicked an 18-yard field goal to give Georgia their only points of this ball game as Georgia went from the 40-yard line of Kentucky down to the one-yard line. That was between the one and the two. Decided on fourth down not to go for it. Kicked the field goal, and thus we have the 14-3 score at halftime. We'll be back after this 60-second network break on the Georgia Bulldog Network. It's closeout time at Regal Nissan in Roswell during their all-star closeout sale. You can get these exciting game-breaking deals. 1987 executive demos are priced at cost. Yes, priced at cost. In addition, you can get a Nissan Sentra at $49 over factory invoice and selected models. And listen to this. Hard body trucks are priced at $19 over factory invoice. Yes, there are exciting all-star deals available to you at Regal Nissan. So make your big play today at Regal Nissan for those 1987 executive demos priced at cost. Those Nissan Sentras for $49 over factory invoice and selected models. And those hard body trucks at $19 over factory invoice. Special financing is available for first-time buyers. And financing is also available for recent college graduates without established credit. These great deals and more are available to you at Regal Nissan at the corner of Georgia 400 and Hulkerbridge Road in Roswell. Regal Nissan, the dealership that's different. The Kentucky Band is on the field. Kentucky leading in the football game by a score of 14 to 3. And now let's bring in Dan McGill. You might say the Kentucky Wildcats are the newest of Georgia's SEC football opponents. That is, we didn't begin playing Kentucky until 1939, whereas the series with our other conference rivals all started well before World War I. Georgia has won the great majority of the games in its Kentucky series, but most of the games have been close with quite a few cliffhangers. Kentucky has won three times in Sanford Stadium, including one of the worst clobberings ever dealt us, a 33 to nothing shellacking in 1977 in front of the future King of England, Prince Charles, a direct descendant of the British King for whom our state and university were named. One of my favorite football stories occurred in the Georgia-Kentucky game of 1978 at Lexington. The Bulldogs trailed 16 to nothing midway the third quarter and had been outplayed all the way. Georgia finally scored in the third quarter when Willie McClendon threw a halfback pass to Amp Arnold for 33 yards deep into Kentucky territory. A few plays later, Willie ran it in, and Rex Robinson's point after touchdown made it 7-16. Later in the quarter, Jeff Pyburn passed to Ulysses Marsh three times on a touchdown drive that closed the gap to 14-16. Georgia's winning drive late in the game set up a 29-yard field goal attempt with only three seconds left on the clock. And when Rex Robinson lined up to kick it, Coach Dooley on the sidelines happened to see his right tackle, Tim Morrison, next to him, and he yelled at him, Morrison, what are you doing here on the sidelines? And Morrison replied, Coach, I'm praying that Rex will make that field goal. My God, explain, exclaimed Coach Dooley, you're supposed to be in there blocking for Robinson right now. We only have 10 men on the field. Fortunately, at that very moment, Coach Kirchie of Kentucky called timeout, hoping to put more pressure on the kicker Robinson. What a break, sighed Coach Dooley, as he pushed Morrison onto the field in the nick of time. Robinson split the uprights, and Georgia won 17 to 16 in a classic cliffhanger. Thank you, Dan McGill. And right now, Kentucky is leading 14 to 3. And we may have another one of those classic cliffhangers before this one's over. At least the dogs have got to hope so right now. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Georgia Bulldog Network. University of Georgia football is brought to you by Mitchell Motors, Cooper Brothers Building Supplies, and McDonald's on AM 750 WSB Atlanta, the sports voice of the South. Checking the scores here. Uh, this is a shocker. North Carolina State 21, Clemson nothing late in the second quarter. So that would be quite an upset. We'll be talking with Dick Bestwick when we return. We'll be back after this 90-second local break on the Georgia Bulldog Network. If your fescue lawn wilted from this summer's record heat wave and left you with ugly, bare, and brown spots, get Pennington Pen-Coated Reseeder. Reseeder is a new lawn seed mixture developed by Pennington and especially blended for overseeding fescue lawns in this area. Pennington Reseeder grows quickly, 
filling in those ugly bare spots and restoring your lawn's deep green color. Pennington Reseeder is pin coated and available now at your favorite seed dealer. And if you're planting a new lawn, be sure the seed you buy is pin coated. Pen Coat is Pennington's exclusive coating of hormones, fungicides, and insecticides. The Pen Coat stimulates a longer, stronger root system that reaches down to more moisture in the summer, greater protection in the winter, giving you a healthier, heartier lawn. Insist on Pennington, the Pen Coated Seed, for a beautiful lawn in sun or shade. Pennington means better seed and is available with Pen Green Lawn Food wherever lawn and garden products are sold. Here's one for you. Who is one of the all-time great Bulldogs? Mr. Kuppenheimer. I tell you, nobody can take out the middleman like Cup can. He makes his own clothes in his own factories, sells them in his own stores. So you can pocket the savings, like in the pocket of a 100% Shetland wool sport coat for just $99.95. Kuppenheimer. He's a Bulldog with the middleman. Buckhead, Jonesboro, Loganville, Norcross, North DeKalb, Roswell, and Smyrna. But now the Georgia band will be making their appearance on the field as the Kentucky band leaves. And as we said, we'll be talking with Dick Bestwick. That'll be coming up shortly. I'd like to remind you that the Buttsmere Heritage Hall, which houses the University of Georgia Athletic Hall of Fame, will be open for an additional three hours this afternoon to 7 o'clock. And if you're coming over here, that's something you need to see. Go to the Buttsmere building and see that for sure. And I know that there's been a new law enforcement policy put in this year for the coaches. And uh, as far as escorts are concerned, uh, nothing was said about the announcer. So I would like to thank my law enforcement escort last week to Vanderbilt, Paul Taylor from the DeKalb County Police Department, although I think I kept him out of trouble rather than vice versa, and also Barry Dawson. At any rate, we'll be back after this 90-second local break on the Georgia Bulldog Network. Well, it's football time all across this land, from Atlanta to Athens down to Birmingham. And every city and college town, the boys are back, and we ain't playing around. Because we're going to hook one, hook two, one, two, three. So don't fool around. Catch all the action in the Atlanta Journal and Constitution. And when the boys are back, there ain't no fooling around. Yep, you're silly. The right move is not confined to football. For example, if you're in the market for a new car, the right move for you could well be buying one of the remaining 87 Oldsmobiles at Mitchell Motors, Peachtree Industrial Boulevard in Chambly. They're handsome, responsive, dependable driving, and selling below invoice prices at Mitchell Motors. Below invoice prices. Select the one you prefer while they last. Look over the 87 models now at Mitchell Motors, Peachtree Industrial Boulevard, just inside the perimeter. We're talking with Dick Bestwick here at halftime, and uh, the halftime going off pretty quick on the clock over there. Dick, uh, let's talk about the first half. I went a little bit goofy uh, on uh, a couple of things that happened in the first half. I, I felt Georgia got just a horrendous call from the officials on the intentional grounding, which put them in a bad position and set up Kentucky's first touchdown. I thought the spot was bad that set up Kentucky once again for good field position. Uh, maybe that's just my feeling. I don't know whether you would agree with me or not. No, looking at the replay on TV in the uh, the monitor in the uh, press box, you can see that all three calls not only were questionable but probably wrong. And you know those things happen in a football game, and you've got to be able to overcome them. This particular game so far has been a field position game. Both the Kentucky scores have come from having excellent field position, 50 yards or less to go, or 55 or less to go. And of course, our three points came after we got the ball in the 40. So that uh, the field position and the officials' calls have dominated the first half of the football game. Although Kentucky uh, clearly, I think, has uh, probably outplayed us at this point, and we need to come back and play like we're capable of playing in the second half. Okay, we'll talk more about it when we return, and we'll be back after this 90-second local break on the Georgia Bulldog Network. the best.
best service for your car, look to the car care professionals who install quality Napa parts. Why Napa? Because Napa parts are as good or better than factory originals. And good car repair starts with the best replacement parts. So next time your import or domestic car needs service, look for the garage or service outlet displaying the Napa sign of quality. Professionals use quality Napa parts. an offer you'll have absolutely no interest in until 1988. No interest charges until February 24th, 1988. And no monthly payment until April 1st, 1988. That's a deal when you use the John Deere credit card or finance plan to buy a new 210, 212, 214, or 216 tractor with 10, 12, 14, or 16 horsepower and variable speed drive. A 20% down payment is required. See your local John Deere dealer soon. Offer expires November 1st. Remember, nothing runs like a deer. Georgia trailing Kentucky 14 to 3. Dick Bestwick is with us here at halftime. Dick, uh, I mentioned the uh, tensional grounding, the uh, bad spot, and you said there were three plays that hurt, so I mentioned two. There was obviously, the, you know, what was the third play now? Well, the third one was on the touchdown pass where the kid made a great catch in the end zone. The left tackle was clearly in motion, illegally in motion prior to the snap of the ball. Uh, here again on the instant replay on TV, you could see him set up in pass blocking, and it's a, you know it's an obvious call, but uh, apparently wasn't very obvious to the official on that side who was looking right at it. So, you know, those things happen, and as I said before, we've got to come back and, and overcome those kind of uh, errors being made. And it is not going to be the same as last week when Georgia had 618 yards of total offense. Today they have 109 at halftime, so clearly this this is a very tough Kentucky football team to move the ball on. They're big and tough. This is a typical Jerry Claiborne type football team. The fullback on the screen, the tailback on the swing passes, the tailback on the toss sweep and the sprint draw. This is this is vintage Jerry Claiborne in defense. The thing that I've noticed that's been most impressive about Kentucky is that they are excellent open field tacklers. They've made a number of one-on-one -on -one tackles in the open field, and uh, this again is the earmark of a team that's well coached fundamentally and and it makes them um, very similar to us. Coach Dooley and Coach Claiborne are both excellent coaches when it comes to fundamentals, and both teams don't make many mistakes in, in that area. Looks to me like this second half, we've got to stop the screen to the fullback, the swing to the tailback, and we began to do that late in the first half, and obviously hold Higgs in check. More importantly, I think uh, it looks to me like Kentucky's overloading on defense and uh, staying to our strong side, inviting us to run to the short side. We're either going to have to throw the ball on running down some with the open formation or go two tights to balance up their defense, and uh, then we're going to have a better chance to run the football. And I, I'd look for us to do one of those two things, probably, or, or perhaps both in the second half. Well, they've done a great job of, uh, first of all, holding Hampton down to, uh, or not Hampton, uh, rather Tate. They've really stalled him. He's had uh, eight carries for 14 yards, which is unbelievable. Well, he had the ball twice in critical situations, and to be honest, I didn't think he ran like Lars uh, ran early in the year, and I'd, I'd have to believe that the knee has been a problem for him, that he's really not quite himself yet, really running as strong and with the quickness that, that he has and which he displayed uh, earlier in the season. I'll tell you what, they've got a fullback that's unbelievable. That Andy Murray can really do some things when he gets his hands on the football. He doesn't look like it, but he should, but he's, uh, he's like a little tank out there. He's very strong, and again, this is typical of the type of people that uh, Jerry will look for to be in his offense, a guy at fullback who can catch the ball and get you the short, tough yardage. Well, you pretty well straightened us out as to what we have to have in the second half. Well, let's uh, hope that we can execute. The important thing is uh, not so much to know what to do, but uh, when you do it, to execute properly, and we very much need to execute this half. Okay, Dick Bestwick has been with us. Thank you very much, Dick, and uh, we won't see you next week since it's an off week. Thanks, Phil. Okay, see you in Florida. We'll be back after this 90-second network break on the Georgia Bulldog Network. Hey, fresh flower, 375. Take a ride on 375. Here's your changes, 375. Almost everywhere you go lately. 375. Of course, 375. Those three numbers.
numbers just keep popping up. 375. They're all over town. 375 Park Lane. 375. If you've been wondering what it's all about, 375 is the price of a CNS Money Saver checking account. And it's such great news, it's got everyone talking. 375. For just 375, you get all the checking you need. Up to 15 checks every month, including instant banking. And there's no minimum balance. 375. Money saver checking at CNS. Why spend any more on checking? And three seventy five only at CNS. Three seventy five. 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 This bus for all that you do. Kentucky leads in the ball game 14 to 3 at halftime and the Wildcats have 200 yards total offense and they have done the bulk of their damage through the air as uh, Glenn Four is 10 for 13 throwing the football one interception but he has thrown for 134 yards Kentucky has 66 yards rushing on 22 attempts Higgs is their leading rusher with 29 yards Murray has 15 yards and Murray's also caught four passes for 39 yards so he's been instrumental in their offensive endeavors and there is a just a monstrous cheer which must be for the Clemson score I would assume Georgia has 109 yards total offense and Jackson has hit three out of five passes for 27 yards Hampton has been the big man running the football with 10 carries for 48 yards but uh, it's been uh, it's been a good defensive effort by Kentucky as they have held Georgia to 82 yards rushing a couple of scores to pass along you you heard the chair it was a Clemson score that they were giving North Carolina State leading 21 to nothing first quarter Tennessee six Georgia Tech now think South Carolina leading East Carolina seven to nothing Michigan and Illinois are tied seven seven Southern College Notre Dame seven to nothing and Syracuse has a 14 to nothing lead over Colgate also in the first quarter Lauren well, I think the Georgia coaches feel like that they have not played the team that is played very well in the first half, and I think the players would agree. One thing that's really hurting Georgia is that with Alfonso Ellis having a growing pull, not playing good, if he plays at three-quarter speed, Georgia doesn't have a fullback game. But they need him in there for blocking, too, so that's really hurt the Georgia offense. You see why Kentucky's been able to stop the tailbacks as well as they have. I think Georgia feeling now that... They're going to have to throw the ball more. We'll probably go more to Wayne Johnson here in the second half. In fact, he could even start. Kentucky to receive as the option was theirs as to what to do in the second half. Now, North Carolina State has kicked a field goal, so they lead Clemson 24 to nothing in the second quarter as Dick Sheridan works set magic for the Wolfpack. Here we go, second half, and to describe it to you, the voice of the Bulldogs, Larry Munson. D. Smith and John Bolden are deep for Kentucky. Casey wants to kick off. A few clouds have come overhead. Stadium rocking at Clemson. Stadium is rocking here. Two big major upsets hanging in the south here. So Casey kicks off for the dogs. Kentucky had the choice. The crowd is up roaring as Mike Guthrie of Lathonia, as he did some last week too, got him up cheering. Casey's long left footer hooks to the goal line, and D. Smith comes out to the five to the ten to the fifteen, gets bumped around the twenty-seven and goes down. Richard Tarditz, the freshman, was the guy that got him. Now it's Kentucky's ball. Late in the second quarter, or the middle of the second quarter. Kentucky started moving with sprint out passes by Glenn Poor, their junior college transfer. First down, Kentucky on their own 28 with a market. Cats lead by 11. Yes, we threatened to score just one little time and backed off and kicked the field goal on the two-yard line. 
They're going to hand it to Hakes. He got outside at the 30, to the 35, to the 40, to the 41. Mark Hakes. Oh, he came out fast. They blocked well on the corner. And he ran by one man, and Steve Harmon had to get him. Hit him first, then came Will Jones are over. And just like that, Higgs just sprinted it up to the 41 and a first down. Kentucky is still, though we just started the third quarter, handling the line of scrimmage. Cats lead 14 to 3. Dogs in a 6-2 now. Four going to give it to Higgs. He's going the other way. One man missed him, but two men hit him right on the line. John Brantley was... The man that finally hit him, and so did Terry Webster, both linebackers. They ran Higgs, veering him out right, then they tried to veer him out left. He gained a foot. Second down, nine and a half. Just started the third quarter. Kentucky in white and blue. Georgia in the red and the silver. Kentucky driving toward the closed end of the stadium, left to right. They're in an eye slot. Dogs in a 4-3. Higgs in motion. They go to the fullback, Big Murray up to the 45. Andy Murray, that big softball, who's been catching short passes. He got himself three and a half yards. Aaron Chubb hit him from the side. The first man, Bill Goldberg, the nose guard, was on the bottom, hanging on to his leg. Kentucky's third down and a full seven. We'll keep an eye on that shocking score. Uh, North Carolina State leading Clemson 24 to nothing. Wildcats come up to the ball. Break two men out. Slot right. Now they put the slot man in motion. Third down, a long seven. Four is back to throw. And he's going to run to the 40. To the 45 and goes down around the 48. Kentucky missed a block out in the open field far on the left or he would have had a first down. Will Jones are over, got him. But he got about four yards. It's fourth and three, Kentucky on the 49, and Jay Tusher will punt. Early third quarter, Kentucky's drive bogging down after Higgs slashed outside and got him one first down. Tusher kicks high, not real deep, off the right side of his foot, hit on our 21, rolls for the kicker, but not much to the 16 or the 17. He kicked it very high, a little angle right, not a good spiral. Georgia's ball, but not good field position. Timeout, 60-second network break on the Georgia Bulldog Network. Pixie Crystal Sugar, naturally sweet, naturally delicious. Oh, my goodness, you can't beat. What's the matter with sugar? I'll tell you what's the matter. Nothing. Sugar's pure, sugar's real. And I've got news for you. Dixie Crystals has only 16 calories a teaspoon. Only 16. Dixie Crystal Sugar. Dixie Crystal Sugar. Oh, my goodness, you can't beat. Last night I saw this lady. She looked like a definite baby. So I said, miss, how do you do? Johnson is the new Georgia quarterback as we start the second half. So the man who came in last week and scored three touchdowns for Georgia at Vandy will now direct the attack. Dogs not in good position on their own 17. We're in an eye. Kentucky's gone to an old-fashioned 6-2 setup. Johnson's going to give it to Tate, who cuts back at the tackle and goes to maybe the 21 for four. He started right and slanted in. Barnett, the big tackle on that side, and John Shannon, the left guard. They say his knee at the ground on the 20, and he only got three, second and seven. 14 to three, Kentucky by 11. Yes, they have dominated us. Dogs with an eye and one wide out, and a toss sweep to Tate. Tate trying to run to the 23 maybe for three more yards. He was coming wide, he couldn't get in. You heard Lauren talk at the halftime that Alfonso Ellis, our fullback, has a groin pull and is not normal with his blocking, and the other fullback, Barry, of course, is gone for the year. Chenault, the linebacker, reached the tackle on the last stop. The ball is on the 23 and a half. We run Rodney Hampton in at the last moment at full, and we take Ellis out. Third down, three and a half. 
in our own territory inside the 25. Jackson fakes. He's in trouble way back behind the line. He's running back inside the five. He's going to throw a long bomb, and it is overthrown at the 50. Osborne was down there. He turned to look because Jackson was 20 yards behind the line. David Johnson covering him. Boy, they chased Wayne Johnson way back down inside the five. And for a moment, I think I called him Jackson when he circled back deep. Jackson was chased 25 yards or more back behind the line inside of his own five and called on intentional grounding in the first quarter, and that call hurt. Fourth down, dogs have to punt. Kentucky's got eight on the line. They don't rush them all. Joey kicks it high, good kick, high spiral. And it hits somebody in the back, and the ball's rolling. Flags down. It's on a 37. Georgia, hit a Georgia man. The ball. It hit a Georgia man in a helmet, I guess. Looked like it hit a Georgia man right in the back. Kentucky waiting to receive a very high, good Joey Hester punt, but we might have another tough break here. We had a couple of funny breaks, close, funny calls in the first half, and cost us at least seven. And now, as we were coming down and waiting for him, the ball hung up and then dropped, and it struck a dog man. It'll be interference on Georgia, and a good punt will be wiped out, and Kentucky will put it in play around the 50. In fact, all the way to our 49. That really did hurt. Time out here, 60-second network break on the Georgia Bulldog Network. If I could dance, I wouldn't need this hat. Bartender. Hi, welcome to comedy night. No, but that's my cheese. What's so funny? Well, this crowd has heard these jokes a million times, so Jackie just does the punchlines. Not with my bologna, you know. <laughs> so why did they come here? For the Bud Light. Bud Light? It's the light beer with the first name and taste. Hey, you're right. Poodles, I said noodles. <laughs> Ask for Bud Light, because everything else is just a light. Hey, everybody, the new guy's gonna try it. Uh, that's no duck. That's my date. Uh, what happened? Tough crowd, pal. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis, Missouri. London, Paris, Frankfurt, Munich, Stuttgart, Shannon. The very names have magic to them. Now add another name, Delta. With flights to all these European cities, Delta offers you discount fares, convenient schedules, the comfort of wide ride TriStars, and the friendliest service in the sky. Tell your travel agent you want to experience the magic of Europe with Delta Airlines. We love to fly, and it shows. Kentucky leads 14 to three, and they'll have pretty good field position as on the punt. The ball came down at first. We thought it hit the man in the back, but actually it hit him in the in the helmet. So Georgia clearly had a man interfering on the play. We now have a halftime score that shows NC State leading Clemson 30 to nothing. Holy cow, that's that's hard to believe. But that is what we are told. 30 to nothing, NC State over Clemson. And that's from the Dixie Crystal Sugar scoreboard. And we're also Southern Cal is 7-3 on Notre Dame into the first quarter. TCU 7, Baylor nothing. End of the first quarter, South Carolina 10, East Carolina 6, end of the first quarter. Here's Kentucky on their own 41. They didn't penalize it that deep. They go to Higgs. He bounced outside, and we hit him for no gain. Little Mark Higgs going in the tackle. The hole was there. It was closed. Aaron Chubb hit him. Mike Brown or over hit him. And it's second down. They had originally stepped off a 15-yard penalty to our 49, and then after the timeout, they came back and put it on the 41, and the penalty wasn't that deep. Cats still lead, though, 14-3. Dogs unable to move. Kentucky second down at 11 point lead with 1040 something to go. Now they got three men loaded wide in the left and one back. Coming back to throw is four and somebody got him. Aaron shoved the end, sacked him on the 21. He tried to get away and dump it to the back. Higgs on the far side, but Aaron Chubb held enough of his leg as he was sliding off him to pull him down. So the deep sack loss brings it back to third down and about 20. Kentucky's still leading, however. Big play for Georgia. Is now they have a chance to get the ball back with good field position if they can hold them on third and real long. Cats put three men on the left side and bring one of them in motion wide across to the right side. And Glenn pours back to pass again. Steps forward, throws to the fullback, threw it wide, incomplete on the 33. He dragged the fullback wide open across the middle and threw it wide. The fullback hit it with his hand. And the crowd is cheering for the defense. And the Cats 
will have to punt on fourth and 20. Nate Lewis, our deepest man. And he's got Bowen and Hargett flanking him. Jay Tusser to punt. And the kick, high, good, long spiral, fair catch. Nate Lewis takes it on the 26. Boy, he got a great kick. And we rushed a man from the right flank that may have been Chubb, who almost got the kicker. And that is twice it, uh, it looked like Georgia was going to get good field position and did not because of the Kentucky kicker, who did an excellent job. He kicked it 43 yards, net dead. And we'll put it in play here outside our own 26. Dogs coming up with Osborne and John Thomas slotted wide out to the left. And the Cats are in a four-man front, almost five. And Wayne Johnson going to hand it off to Tate, who comes up tough in the middle for three yards. And no more to the 30 or 31 at left guard. Shannon, the lineman, Kramer, the linebacker, hit him second down. Lauren? Uh, I think you would agree on that last series. The defense played with a lot more enthusiasm, a lot more commitment. Now the offense needs to follow suit and get something going here. Kentucky got a man down. Jerry Reese, their right tackle, who's had a pretty good ball game at second and seven. Kentucky with an injury. 14 to 3 Kentucky and the cat trainers have come out to take a look at it working on his right leg uh, they stopped uh, Tate after a pickup of three and Tate has really been throttled thus far by the Wildcats that was his 11th carry 23 yards thus uh, far for Tate in the ball game and uh, certainly far below his average as he comes in as one of the leading rushers in the Southeastern Conference Bestwick didn't think he was running quite as hard as he had been I wonder if that knee is still bothering him uh, Kentucky has really done a good job of, uh, of closing everything up, and they are a tough team to run against, that's for sure. Georgia now has 91 yards rushing in the football game. Mm. Kentucky has 74 yards, so yep. neither team exactly knocking your socks off with a running attack thus far. In fact, if anything, Kentucky's doing it with the pass today. Most of them sprint out stuff or roll out. We slot left now. Cats are in a 5-3. We put Osborne back in motion inside, and... Wayne Johnson's going to try to run straight ahead, and somebody really hit him on the 33, and he only got two yards. Wayne Johnson. Johnson saw room, and the Cats closed in. Big Barnett, the tackle on the left side, always 278, and then Tony Massey, the end. Johnson got a couple of yards. We're now third down and four and a half. Still getting beat 14 to three. We don't have a touchdown yet, and we're in our own ballpark, and the other guy's hitting us right in the mouth. Pro set. And the Cats in the five-man front. Johnson across, over through Osborne, breaking open, coming across our 40 to the 43. Threw it high. Cash has tried to jump with one hand, and again, we cannot move the ball at all, and we'll have to punt it out. Kentucky still just whipping us physically, 14 to 3, fourth and four. The other shocking thing was what Phil mentioned earlier, and of course, that's probably a much bigger shock. NC State was 30 to nothing on Clemson at the end of the half. The Cats are putting eight men on the line as Joey Hester wants to punt. Jimmy O'Neill, a safety man for Kentucky. They lead by 11. They don't rush everybody. Hester kicks. Good spiral off the left side of his foot. Uh oh, it bounced backwards against Hester from the 37 back to the 43. Flag down late, and we're going to have a penalty here. We got on, it on us, too, I believe. Uh, I don't know, Larry. It looked like a Kentucky man hit a Georgia man down the field in the back as the ball took the funny hop. And uh, we've got one Kentucky player a little bit hot under the collar, and now his teammates hurt him off the field and sent him to the sidelines. Let's see what we got. The ball bounced backwards six yards. Hester had a bad punt, only 24 yards, and a penalty now, and it may go against the dogs. We're retreating, an official spotted collision after... The ball to kick, yes. It's just not been a lucky day at all. Well, I called that one wrong. I looked like the Georgia man got shoved, but obviously there was more to it than what I could see. Time out here. 60-second local break on the Georgia Bulldog Network. Weekends, days off, don't want to work no more. Gonna take my time now that it's mine. And I don't want to be where there's no Coca-Cola. This is the life. These are the real things. Classic. Sometimes any number is good.
try either 87 or 88 at Mitchell Motors, Peachtree Industrial Boulevard in Shanley. Georgia's oldest Oldsmobile dealer offers while the stock lasts. All new 1987 Oldsmobiles priced 750 WSB Atlanta. Well, another penalty, and Georgia doesn't find themselves in very good position again, Larry. Now they're on our 42, deep, bad, 15-year penalty after a very bad punt. Four fakes, bootlegs out to the left with a blocker. Going to throw on a run, complete. We hit him on our 31 out of bounds. Vince Guthrie hit him. He hit Darren Bilbury, the number two fullback, in there for the first time. They just whipped it out down there and got about 11 yards. And here's Kentucky knocking on the door. 14 to 3. Tennessee 19, Georgia Tech nothing on the Dixie Crystal Sugar scoreboard in the second quarter. Syracuse 28, Little Colgate nothing, of course, in the second quarter. West Virginia 10, Boston College nothing, first quarter. Notre Dame 10, Southern Cal 7 in the second quarter. All these Dixie Crystal Sugar scoreboard. Kentucky in the 31. A toss sweep to Big Baker. And we're going to trap him back in a 36. Their blocker shoved Guthrie back, and Guthrie got him. And then coming up to help was one of the safety men, Harmon. Baker, the reserve tailback, took a five, six yard loss to the 36 and a half. And that means that the last two running plays by Kentucky, they've lost six yards on each one of them. So Georgia's doing a good job against the running game, but again, they're having trouble with that pass. Dixie Crystal, Sugar Scoreboard, Pittsburgh 10, Navy 6 in the fourth quarter. Now on second and 16, the Cats on our 37. They run a trap. Bilbury gets tripped. Brantley primarily around the 34. Goldberg may have tripped him first. The nose guard, Bill Goldberg, tripped him on the 34. He gained a couple of yards. Darren Bilbury, the number two fullback. Cats are kind of getting in a field goal set here. Third and 13 on our 34. They still lead. 14 to 3. Dogs bench their quarterback and not because of an injury. We put targets in there in the defensive line trying to get a rush. We're in a four-man front. Glenn Four fires incomplete. Targets got him late. Targets got him a half a second late. Intended for Charlie Darrington. Boy, did Targets come flying from the left corner and nobody picked him up and he may have seen him. Well, he whipped his man completely and he forced him to unload it in a hurry. And they, again, they were trying to throw that ball to the fullback up the middle. It was unsuccessful, so they revert back to what's worked for them so well. And now they're trying to get the field goal team on the field, and uh, there seems to be some confusion by Kentucky, yeah. so they're going to call a timeout. Kentucky will call time, and it's still 14 to 3, and they're sitting out here on our 34. Timeout, 60-second local break on the Georgia Bulldog Network. For Brothers Building Supplies, remind you there's a new way to cut heating costs in your home without cutting comfort. Just install True Blue Styrofoam brand insulation from Dow. Styrofoam comes in 4x8 and 4x9 boards, and easy-to-follow literature is available to help. Get True Blue Styrofoam brand insulation at Cofer Brothers on Main Street in Tucker. That's Cofer Brothers in Tucker's. They're coming to a Hardee's near you, the California Raisins. For a limited time at participating parties, buy any two Rise and Shine biscuits or any dessert and get a cool California raisin figurine for only 99 cents. There are four in all, a new one each week. California raisin figurines, only 99 cents each at Hardy's, where we're out to win you over. Kentucky wants to try a field goal. They're going to hold it on our 41. Joey Worley to try with Bill Allen to hold. 51 yarder. They lead 14 to 3. 658 to go in the third quarter. We got nine. Now we got eight on the line. Kentucky gonna try a long field goal. He got it up there close. Close. No good. Off to the left. He just missed it. It was settling about far level and a little to the left. And the dogs will get the ball in fairly decent field position for the first time in a long time. Warren. Surprised me a little bit. Jerry Claiborne's a very conservative coach. Uh, gives Georgia a really good field position right there, Larry. And if Georgia could ever get some offensive momentum in there with Wayne Johnson, the quarterback, the way he throws, something good could happen. But they've got to eventually get that momentum, get something going. We need the line of scrimmage. 
the Cats are in a five. Wayne Johnson to Hampton, who pushed the blocker, tried to keep going. They were holding a blocker up, and Rodney Hampton, running at a right tackle, was pushing a blocker and only got three yards. They are just whipping us where we're blocking. Reese, the tackle, who plays well. Chris Chenault, the linebacker, stopped him. At the half, Michigan State 7, Illinois 7 on the Dixie Crystal Sugar scoreboard. The fourth quarter, Duke 22, Maryland 7. Second and seven, we're in the eye. We got a slot man in motion. Lewis coming across. Wayne Johnson to Hampton. Hampton's going to get outside. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Hit and out of bounds back around the 14. Ron Mack shoved him. Hampton with that speed blew it outside. The first and only big offensive play we've had all day long. Suddenly we're down there. He moving and trying to keep his shoes three inches inside the line. Balls on the 13 and a half. First down. We're still 11 points down. 6-12 in the third quarter. Lewis and Osborne out to the right. Osborne's outside. Kentucky is almost in a six. We run Lewis in motion back over to the left side. And Wayne Johnson is going to keep it and run five. quarter 607 Kentucky eight men on the line and Casey puts it in there good and it's 14 to 10 timeout 60 second local break on the Georgia Bulldog Network. sometimes any number is good try either 87 or 88 at Mitchell Motors Peachtree Industrial Boulevard in Chambly Georgia's oldest Oldsmobile dealer offers while the stock lasts all new 1987 Oldsmobiles priced below invoice Mitchell Motors also has an excellent selection of new 1988 models with all the new features you've been looking for. Either way, you can't lose because Mitchell Motors will not be undersold and trades are the highest ever. Go see how much you'll save at Mitchell Motors. Peachtree Industrial Boulevard just inside the perimeter. Now McDonald's salads are doing all the talking. Chicken salad, oriental, dog and chef. We're tossing salad, tossing great, great taste. I love it when McDonald's talks to me this way. Oh, okay, every day we're tossing them fresh. Chicken salad, oriental, dog and chef. We're tossing them fresh all day. McDonald's Keep talking. Get a chef salad or a chicken salad oriental for just two twenty nine plus tax. Based on individual restaurant participation, prices may vary. Offer ends October 29th. The crowd roaring as Casey kicks off for the dogs. Sailing tough soccer kick over the head of the receiver on the five and through the end zone. D, D Smith ran up to a ball and it just sailed over him. A flat, funny sailing ball, hooking right and not high at all. Now Kentucky will line up on their own 20. Kentucky's lead is 14 to 10. It's been 14 to 3 for eight hours. Now it's 14 to 10. And the Cats will put it in play. Hampton's brilliant run. Though, let me say, the right side of our line sealed that off for him, turned that corner in, and got him out there. We're in a six-man front four, rolling to the left to throw. Got a good block. Going to throw a long bomb down the field. Everybody fights for it. Incomplete. Two defenders and a receiver on our 32-yard line. Two men jumping. Beasley and Vincent up in the air with a receiver. As four sprinted left and threw a bomb. And Georgia had to play well covered. It was a terrible pass by four. He had no business throwing that pass. It was very interceptable as Georgia had numbers down at the other end of the field. They had good pressure on the quarterback. This is a very big series for Georgia. Should they stop Kentucky now, then they've really got momentum going their way in a big way. The receiver was six foot three. Well, we had two shorter people jumping with him, but managed to break it up. Kentucky on her own, 22nd down. Four comes out to the right, fires, knocked out of his hands, incomplete, almost intercepted. Brantley really hit the receiver, Charlie Darrington, on the 25, a short pass over, and it'll be third down. Will Jones 
climbed right in the uh, receiver's face that time, a big tight end, and they uh, they had a nice collision with the ball landing there at the same time. So another good defensive play. Now Georgia must hold on third and ten. And remember earlier, as Jones was helping the linebacker on that play, it was Will Jones who saved us with an interception down around our five-yard line as Kentucky sprinted out and threw it short on that side. They were about to score and put the game away. And he had to fight for the interception then. Here we go on third down, four, back to throw for the Cats. Throws a screen to that big fullback in the left, and we hit him on the 22. Mike Brown, the rover, one of the first men over there to hit him. Dotson was the second man coming over. They threw it to Big Murray, the fullback, with two blockers, a screen, and they only got two. The stadium rocks now, and the crowd is roaring for the defense. Fourth down and eight. Dogs put eight men on the line. Tesser will be punting for Kentucky on the nine. Good snap, and the kick is coming. Caught by Lewis on his own 36 to the 40 to the 45 and up to about the 48. Dogs with good field position, four points behind. Timeout, 62nd local break on the Georgia Bulldog Network. When Georgia families need service from their insurance. From the home team at Cooper Brothers. Well, let's give the Georgia defense some credit. The Georgia defense has really done the job waiting for the offense to wake up. They have held Kentucky to four yards rushing in the second half thus far. They have, and now they have given the offense great field position near midfield. Dogs just across their own 48, still trailing, now four points. Third quarter, Kentucky's in an old 6-2-3. Osborne in motion left to right off a slot, and the handoff to the little fullback. Ellis, he squirted out to their 45. He almost broke loose, playing with pain, by the way, today. Got seven yards. Robinson, the safety hit him. John Shannon, the guard, was holding on to him. Nate Lewis back in, John Thomas out. Dogs sitting on the Kentucky 45. The football is a few inches outside of it. Second and three. 14 to 10, Kentucky 447. Slot on the right with an eye. The Cats are now to 5 3 2 1. Wayne Johnson going to take it. Going to give it on the flank of reverse. And Nate Lewis to the 45 to the 40. Try to juke a man, but got to the 34 and a first down. He got 10 or 11. Ran that flank of reverse for the second time. Holler and a linebacker. Mack a corner. With a man that knocked him down, they put it back to the 34 and a half. It's inside the 35. They got the same result each time. 11 yards on that particular play. And uh, now Georgia's got Kentucky kind of guessing. They've got him a little bit off balance. Alfonso Ellis is the full and Hampton the tail and Wayne Johnson keeps it and runs back in at left guard. I think we had a busted play there. Big Johnson keeping it and Gardner the left end and Reese the tackle on the right hit him and the gain was at the very most two and a half yards. Second down, seven and a half. Big Wayne Johnson from Columbus has tried to come in and save the ball club. Ball on the 32 just touching it. Second down, seven and a half. Lewis and Osborne slotted wide right. The Cats are in a five, now a six. Wayne Johnson looks at him, coming back to throw. Looks, 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 and he threw an interception. Shy of a receiver, and the Cats got the ball on the 25. Ron Robinson intended for Nate Lewis, and the ball was thrown a couple of yards shy and low and hard, and Kentucky defender had it hit him right on the chest on the numbers and the cats have stopped the drive we've still been behind all day it's 14 to 10 Kentucky really had field position and we're really starting to knock on the door and it came apart Kentucky up to the line they've slotted to the left side four gonna give it to Higgs he's trying to get outside and he broke one tackle we got him on the 33 Webster got it Mark Higgs Flaring and swinging for about seven. He runs right at his left end and then veers out. Going to be second down and a short three. 14 to 10, Kentucky 308. That run represents more yardage on the ground than they've had this entire quarter. The Cats, big Brad Myers, 270-pound center over the ball. They slot two men to the right. 
And they give it to Higgs again. He cut inside. He might have a first down. I think he got three to the 36. He went inside his right tackle, just barely inside. Got about three. Tyrell McClendon hitting him. Goldberg helping. Goldberg was the last man actually on the bottom. First down, the official said. 14 to 10. The last time the Dixie Crystal Sugar scoreboard looked, Clemson was behind 30 to nothing. And Tech was behind 19 to nothing. Kentucky on her own 36, 14 to 10. They run a draw with Higgs. He veers off, but two men pinched him on the 39. Mark Higgs, a dangerous little tough stunting runner. Webster closed the hole on the draw primarily. Notre Dame 17, Southern Cal 7 in the second quarter on the Dixie Crystal Sugar scoreboard. Higgs and uh, Tate came into this ball game two and three in the conference in rushing. Thus far, Higgs has 55 yards. Tate has 24. Hampton has had 100 yards for Georgia. Kentucky one back, three wideouts, one of them in motion, and four on second and seven is back to throw. Trying to go, and they got him. They sacked him on a 26. Big Larry Brown, one of them, and Tyrone McClendon. And Larry Brown got him on a deep sack loss, 12, 13 yards back. Now they'll mark it dead on the 29, so the loss was just 10. 14 to 10, Kentucky with a minute and 28. Brutal Southeastern Conference war. And we really couldn't smile at it at all until I lit this oversized cigar that the Decay Bulldog Club gave me the other night. He falls on the 26 and they put it on the 29. I don't, I don't understand that. I guess they ruled it that drove him back the last three yards. I don't even. Third down, Kentucky, and 17 to go, 17 in a fraction. They're on their own 29. Three wideouts, one in motion. Four wants to pass. Fires and complete, and he bounced off a tackle. Going down the side is Jimmy O'Neill. All the way to the 10, the 5, and they rolled him out on about the 1. Larry, we got a flag on the play. Watch the penalty back at the line of scrimmage. Kentucky has just sprung a 70-yard play. O'Neill bounced off a tackle and got 35 more yards, but the penalty may dogs a piece of luck illegal motion against Kentucky motion penalty on Kentucky bad luck for the cats and good luck for the dogs that's twice they've had trouble with the penalties against them on a big play this time there was two men with the receiver he caught it somebody really slammed off him and then he went down that side but a penalty would take away what could have been a Kentucky touchdown on the one yard line Lauren take back all those things we said about those officials they were really on the ball there Larry when you say but on the play very good play Georgia uh, the defensive back came up there were two of them trying to make the interception and they sort of knocked one another off the Kentucky receiver did a good job of concentrating and catching the football and then it was a foot race and he almost got in but fortunately for Georgia Kentucky was in motion we're in a 4-3 and they run a draw and one man trip takes at the line and that was Paul Giles who tripped him at the line and he fell forward and got two or three yards. They ran a trap. We were in kind of a safe defense, but Giles tripped him. He went on the 26th and it's fourth down and about 25 to go and Tesser the punter is in for Kentucky. Nate Lewis is deep for the dogs. We're rushing a man from the side, almost got it. Beautiful kick, high. Lewis, but he broke off to the 32 to the 35 to the 38. He dropped it, he picked it up low and squirted and got five or six steps on a 42-yard punt. And I mean, Jay Tesher really got his foot into that ball. Now, the dogs, with only nine seconds in the quarter, will line it up on our own 38 and a half. 14 to 10, Kentucky. The third quarter is about gone. And the Cats have a man down over here on this side right in front of the Georgia bench. Well, Georgia has good field position once again and uh, now things are starting to go Georgia's way and uh, although Lawrence said we should take back everything, I don't think we'll take quite back everything, Lauren. Lauren, you there? Yes, uh, Phil, I was just going to say that uh, in addition to the uh, Kentucky player who is hurt down here, Georgia's 
I got a player down too. David yeah. Hargett is hurt. I'm not sure what his problem is, but he came flying out of bounds, so there's pretty good contact down here. Looks like in the Kentucky player number 24 Johnson is all right, but I still don't know what the situation is with David Hargett, but they're getting him up now. Looks like he's going to be all right. Okay, he was out of bounds, and uh, it was a little bit hard to see him because he was in the sidelines, and we couldn't see him from the angle that we have. But uh, at any rate, Georgia will have good field position. The breaks, maybe they do even out. I don't know because Georgia's had a couple of them, and that last one was a very, very big break. Instead of Kentucky being on the goal line, now here's Georgia sitting with the ball on their own 39 yard line excellent field position and still down by just four points Dixie Crystal Sugar scoreboard Syracuse 42 little Colgate nothing and in the first that's a halftime and in the first quarter Iowa State 10 and Kansas 7 in the first quarter the quarter here will end in a matter of seconds so we may get a playoff 14 to 10 on our own 39 the ball's just inside of the 39 Todd Wheeler over the ball, two men slotted wide. Kentucky with the five-man line. Wayne Johnson can give it to Tate. He got a hold of the tackle of the 40-45, maybe the 46 as a quarter ends. He got about seven big yards, and it'll be second down. The end of the quarter, Kentucky 14, Georgia 10. 60-second network break on the Georgia Bulldog Network. If you need carpeting that adds fashion and excitement to your decorating ideas, so it's 222 to 216. The yardage rather even, and Georgia trailing by a 14 to 10 score as we start the final quarter. And we uh, split our backs, Allison Tate, and slot left on second down and two. That last game had been about eight. We give it to Tate. He needs a block. He drives ahead and gets a first down and came across and got about four. Big Barnett to tackle. And Ron Mack, the cornerback. Tate running hard. Got to their 48. And just starting the fourth quarter, we're on the other side of the 50. Horn. A uh, hyperextended elbow for David Hargett, uh, Larry. You can see them down here working on it, but they tell me he should be okay. He possibly even, e even play today, although it looks like he's showing a lot of pain on his face at this point. Slot left with an eye. We go to Tate, and they hit him right on the line. He only got two yards straight ahead. Somebody broke off a block. One of my linebacker, Chris Chenault, was one of the men in there. Tate trying to follow his guard. And John Shannon, the big nose guard. Dixie Crystal Sugar scoreboard. Tennessee 22, Georgia Tech nothing at the half. South Carolina 24, East Carolina 6 at the half. Big Randy Jackson is at the full trying to give Ellis some rest. We're in an eye slot on second and eight. And the Cats are in a 5-2. And Wayne Johnson fakes, gets in trouble, comes out to the left, and they sack him back on the 45. He was going to throw a bomb, and John Thomas was trying to break loose deep down the field. Tony Massey, the end, got him. Wayne Johnson pulled his leg away from one man and then stopped and wanted to plant his feet and throw. He had gone a little off to the left and got sacked, and it's third and 17. behind 14 to 10 Kentucky has led all day for a long time it was 14 to nothing. and even a longer time than that it was 14 to 3 and now it's 14 to 10 pro set and the cats are in a 5-3 Wayne Johnson wants to pass and they're coming at him flag down he threw it across and Kentucky intercepted Tony Massey the end will be knocked down there's two flags down on the 43 and let's see did we have a holding penalty he threw on right by Wayne Johnson who dumped a short pass over the middle George has waited for an accurate passer all day today and never found one and Dick Payne and Louis Phillips and I were just sitting here talking about that and now the Wayne was lucky to escape to get the throw off Kentucky picked it off. There was a holding penalty on the dogs. Kentucky will take this play. They are on our 43. What they want now is at least a field goal because their lead is 14 to 10. The Cats with that interception. Georgia is having trouble with their throwing game today. There's no doubt about that. Three for nine throwing the football, Larry. Two interceptions. Kentucky in a wing T right. Now the slot man comes in motion to the left. We're in a four-man front. Four is going to give it to Higgs. Higgs is coming out, and the defense meets him on the 42 and drives him back. 
Brantley was one of them. Webster was another, and Vince Guthrie, the defensive end, the other one, and the play was maybe a yard, second and nine. Lauren, what do you got? Well, you got frustration on the sideline again, just like it was in the first half. George is playing good defense, but making those mistakes on offense. Now, the situation is very uh, obvious now. George has got to keep playing that inspired defense and hope they'll get the break, get something going, get that momentum on offense. We come up to a five-man line, and we're rushing four. He throws too high, incomplete. Pretty close to Rusty Beasley, our deep defensive back over there at safety. Tenor for Martin Pennington. Boy, we rushed somebody right in that quarterback's face. He had to throw. That was Mike Guthrie who almost got him. Third and nine. 12.30 to play now. 14 to 10. Kentucky still leading. They change and take Jimmy O'Neill down and put Phil Logan in. Cats with a four-point lead. Boy, it's been a funny game. And a fair number of penalties. Some of them not called. Kentucky with a wing tee breaks a man in motion left to right to the wide side of the field. Glenn Four is back to throw. Four throws and a big lineman. Andy Dotson hit it at the line. And tenor for Logan. Andy Dotson, the big sophomore out of spring. since he's come back. He sure missed a lot of crucial games with an injury this year. Fourth and nine, the defense stopped him again. And Mike Bowen is our safety. Kentucky now will try to kick it high and short and kick us in a hole. We are only going to rush four men, and he kicks it high spiral. Mike Bowen will go away from the ball. It hits on the one, but it bounces for Kentucky backwards to the three. He kicked it way up in the air, beautifully hitting on the one, and it came backwards, and the dogs are in a deep, bad hole again, all the way down on their own one-and-a-half, two-yard line. It's touching the two. Time call, 60-second network break. All right, we're on our own two, 98 yards away from victory or defeat. Lewis in motion to the left. We're going to run a sweep to Hampton to the two, up to the five, maybe, and that's all. They converged over very well. Shannon, the big guard, and Ron Mack, the cornerback. We try to get him over to the short side, and Hampton got out to about the five. Second down. Pause 10 seconds here for station identification. You're listening to University of Georgia football on AM 750 WSB Atlanta. Brought to you by your Atlanta Coca-Cola bottler, Kuppenheimer Men's Clothiers, and Hardee's. Second and seven. Lewis in motion again. A six-man line. And we go to Ellis. He's going to bounce out to the nine, to the ten, to the fifteen, to the seventy. He fumbled the ball and it went out of bounds around the twenty. It looked like he threw it out. Gardner, uh, number two left hand, and Mark Sellers a free safety for Kentucky hit him. Boy, Ellis bounced out. And the ball flew out of his hands, and he got five more yards with that. The game was 15. First down on the 20. 31 to 14 on Purdue in the third quarter. Utah State, Utah, nothing, nothing. Just starting. Randy Jackson in at full. That was Dixie Crystal Sugar scoreboard. First down on the 20. Thomas and Lewis split out on the eye. Wayne Johnson going to boot leg to the right. Look in trouble behind the line. Going to try to come down the side and they drive him out. He may have gotten a yard or so. He stepped out around the 21 or 22. John Shannon and Vic Adams chasing him. The linebacker Kramer was trying to help him. Wayne got a short two yards, second down, eight, eight and a half. He got 11 minutes and 24 seconds to play. Wayne came over to the short side, wanted to throw, decided to run. No, we've had no air arm today. They've had some. They almost stepped on Lauren on the sidelines. I with two wide outs. The Cats are in a six. Wayne Johnson to Hampton at the left tackle, and they shut him down. He only got a yard and a half. We are having trouble blocking over there on that side. That's for sure. That's where that Jerry Reese is, and Kramer's a linebacker on that side. Ball now up close to the 24, but it's third down and six and a half. And we're still behind 14 to 10, trying to get out of this hole down here and get going. Jackson and Hampton are the backs. Jackson asked Hampton something a couple of times. Kentucky comes up on the six again. Wayne Johnson going to take it and drop back. Throws it across to the left. Complete. John Thomas dove for a first down to the 31. Kind of crawled a little. He caught a low ball on the 29 and reached and stretched. 
Bates for the first down. Kramer, the linebacker, hitting Chris Colbert, the cornerback, coming up. Just barely a first down. And now we take Hampton and Jackson out, and we run in fresh backs. Tate and Alfonso Ellis. Just barely got the first down yeah. on that play. 14 to 10, Kentucky. 10 minutes and some seconds to go. Wayne Johnson going to fake bootleg out right. They chase him behind the line. Johnson's looking. He fires incomplete up around the 45. Flag down. They hit the receiver after the play. Kentucky is uh, number two safety man. Hit Cassius Osborne three or four yards out of bounds. Wayne barely got the pass off up the sideline incomplete. They were really chasing him. Kentucky wants to complain on the call. Let's see. Well, you can go to football game after football game and never see the officials, and today they have become a very important part of this ball game for sure. 15-yard penalty against Kentucky for accidentally hitting a receiver late. Give us a first down up on our own 46, but we're having trouble doing it by ourselves. Lauren? Impression that the Kentucky defense might be getting a little tired. Georgia might begin to wear on them, but when he drops back to throw, Wayne Johnson, that is, they really come. They keep coming, so they're fighting hard, and this is where the Georgia offensive line has got to be the winner of the football game. Four points down, 10 minutes and 18 seconds. Left than that. Now, we go to Tate. There's a hole over the 50. He bounced and got four more yards. We had a hole in the middle in there. Burroughs, Wheeler, and Stevens blocking Looks like he got eight or nine. Jeff Kramer knocked him down. He got nine, second down, one. Nate Lewis in, John Thomas out. Ball on the Kentucky 46. We have to go inside the 45 for a first down, almost the 44. Second down. A little better than a yard. And the Cats are in at five. Men standing on the corners. Nate Lewis in motion. Wayne Johnson keeps it. Stumbles. Gets a first down. He got two and a half yards to the 43. Christian Holt, the left side linebacker, tripped his feet out. First down. We're four points down now. You can't think about a field goal. 9.34 to go. They move the chains. We're on the Kentucky 43. And don't think it's not tough. These guys are really hitting you. Georgia up to the line. On the Kentucky 43. Wayne Johnson going to hand it to Tate. No blocking as he went at right guard. He got about a half yard. Yes, it, the play almost busted. We barely got the handoff to Tate, who came at right guard. And Scott Inverse, Kentucky's right guard, and Tony Massey, the left end, stopped him. No gain, second and ten. Boy, we've had trouble with these guys today. And I guess one of the main things is, too, we cannot throw. We just can't hit anybody. 8.54. Lewis goes wide left. Thomas short right. Kentucky's in a four now. And we try to run a trap, and they hit Ellis behind the line, and he broke away, and he fought, and he fought, and he got three yards to the 40 by running three different directions. We tried to run a draw. They read it. We only got three, third, and seven. Endress the guard and Kramer, the linebacker, were third down on the Kentucky 40. We can't move. 8.24, and the clock running, and the Cats are still holding on 14 to 10. And here's, here we have another of those big third and long situations. Four points behind, pro set, which means the backs are split. Wayne Johnson, our number two quarterback, throws to the sideline, complete to John Thomas. He broke the tackle, the 30, the 25, the 20, and out of bounds around the 16. John Thomas caught a seven-yarder on the right, pulled his leg away from a man who should have had him dead, and went down the side. Robinson, a safety man. Christian all had him first, the linebacker. Robinson got him. They'll set it down on the 16. The dogs are that close. 8.01 to go. That is the same play where they got the first down before. They threw it to Thomas on the other side. This time he was able to break away. So Thomas has been the big clutch man on this drive with two key receptions. We're on the 16. The Cats in a four. And a sneak in the middle by Wayne Johnson. Trying to catch them on a quick count, by the way. But Kentucky wouldn't do it. Christian Alt, the linebacker, one of the men. And Scott Endress, the right guard were the two men that jammed it up and we got two yards by the toughest second and eight 742 and the clock running 
Kentucky is still kicking us right in the mouth at the line of scrimmage. 14 to 10, Kentucky still leading. Two tight ends, just one wide out, and that's Nate Lewis, and he's in motion now going across the field. Toss sweep to Hampton. He needs a block. He went to the 10. He got about four, maybe. He had some blocking and not enough. It's going to be third down on the 10. Larry, they may be hitting us in the mouth, but I think we've opened a cut over their eye. Dorch, the defensive right end. Chris Talbert, the cornerback of the men that stopped him. The football is the length of the ball over the 10. Third down and three. Boy, you talk about a big play. 14 to 10, Kentucky, 6.57 on the clock running, and the stadium comes up. Lewis in motion right to left again. Wayne Johnson looks. He wants to run. They hit him, and I don't think he got a first down. Wayne saw a hole and tried to turn and run in there. I think he got two when he needed three. But we'll see where they spot it. They had him in a sitting position when they hit him. The crowd roaring. Do you know that this might be a whole game right here? Fourth down and a whole yard to go, and time has been called by the dogs, 6-29. 14 to 10, Kentucky. 60-second network break on the Georgia Bulldog Network. This bus for all that you do. As you burn yourself that through. The instructions, and this is it. Fourth and one, the ball on the 12-yard line. Dogs trail by four, so the field goal does nothing for them right now. Ball on the seven. Seven-yard line, excuse me, the seven-yard line. And the whole Kentucky team went to the sideline, which they've done before today to talk to their coaches during the timeout. The whole team walked over. Fourth down and one. Have to go to about the seven for the first down. Wayne Johnson gives it to Hampton. He dove and got hit. I don't know. He tried to dive at right guard. Well, here we go. Maybe oh. it'll be the spot of the ball again. That's right. 6.25 to go. They stop it to measure. It looked like Hampton leaped a little early unless somebody was coming through, and he had to jump that early. He went at right guard. Hampton standing up. Boy, you talk about a measurement. We were sitting on about the six, uh, now about the seven and a half. They're going to come out and measure now. Lauren, what does it look like? Well, here again, Larry, it depends on the spot, but I don't think they move the ball very much. It looks like to me that there's a good chance he's got it, but it's going to be close. An uh, inch or more if he gets it. No, he didn't uh -uh. get it. Did not get it. Kentucky has stopped us there. Kentucky still got this game to win. 14 to 10. The ball is on the six. We tried Hampton on a dive. And we wound up shy. They were holding us, you remember, on the one and three quarter yard line right near the end of the half. So we went for a field goal on fourth down. Here we try to hurdle it between the six and the seven. Now the Cats have got the ball. If Kentucky gets a drive, they beat us. We're in a six-man line. Higgs goes to the tackle, and we stop him dead. Mark Higgs went to right tackle. The crowd roaring for the defense. Will Jones are over. Over there helping the left side of the line. The linebackers watch the clock. Notre Dame's 20 to 7 on Southern Cal. Dixie Crystal Sugar scoreboard at the half. 14 to 10 Kentucky. Can you believe we could not get a yard from them? They're too strong in that line. And now the defense has to buckle down and do the job again. Got to get the ball back. Have to make them punt for the quarterback to Higgs. And they hit him very hard at left guard. John Brantley hit Mark Higgs. It might be a second down and maybe a nine or so. They haven't moved it much. The first time didn't move it at all. Second time they got it out to about the Seven and a half, it's third down. Third and nine, 526, watch the clock. 14 to 10, Kentucky leading. Kentucky has led all day long. 516 to go, the Cats use plenty of time in the huddle. Glenn Ford, the quarterback, the crowd roaring for the defense. And they're gonna give it 
to D. Smith, the flanker. He starts out. He gets some blocks. We finally hit him on the 13. He came wide left. They ran the flanker around. Guthrie, one of the men tripping him. Terry Webster, Tyrell McClendon. Ball is spotted on the 13. He got about six, fourth and three. Kentucky has to punt. Look at the clock, 446. And Kentucky's been ahead all day long. Four points. Jay Tesser to punt. He's had some good kicks today. He got up a high, lazy ball, not a spiral. Nate Lewis took it. He's in trouble trying to go ahead, and they hit him hard on the 50. He barely got across. 4.26 to play. Time called 39-yard kick. 60-second local break on the Georgia Bulldog Network. You know... Our producer, Hugh Christian, just reminded me this is just what Vince Dooley needs to keep calm. Oh. <laughs> or some of the calls that he wondered about in the first half when he had to go talk. We're on the Kentucky 49. 49 yards away from victory number six or loss number three. And Hampton squirts inside the tackle to with a 43 and got six. Barnett, the tackle from behind. Kramer, the linebacker, hit him. Rodney Hampton running. Here comes Tate in, and Hampton sits down. He got to the 42. He got seven. Second down, a long three. 406, 405. Dogs up to the line on the 42, still behind. Osborne and Thomas wide left. The Cats are in a five, almost a six-man front. Wayne Johnson going to go a toss sweep to Tate, and Tate got hit and went down as he crossed the 40, and I don't think he got a first down. It looked like he got about two and a half. Clock 343, big Barnett the tackle on that side, weighs 278. That's why we've had some problems today, those two big tackles, Reese and Barnett. Thing. You've got to give the defense credit. They've held Kentucky to 28 total yards in the second half. 28 yards in the entire half, Larry. Third down and two feet inside the 40 by 10 inches. And Kentucky looks at Wayne Johnson. He tosses it to Tate. Tate's five, six yards. Fumbled the ball as he hit the ground, and there's a pile up, but the dogs recovered. Who recovered the ball? Tate went down in the 33. Big Sadowski, was it, 87? No, somebody else coming up with it. Kurt Mole, the tackle, had the ball. Big Kurt Mole from Longwood, Florida. The 281-pound right tackle saved us on the 33, or that was the third loss of the year. 3.04, the clock running. It ain't over. We're still losing. Osborne to the left. John Thomas to the right. We're in a pro set. We split the backs. The Cats in a five, acting like a blitz. Wayne Johnson to the sideline to John Thomas. The tackler hit him. He broke away. He broke away, but went down on a 17 and a half. He almost pulled from two. But Robinson and Johnson in the secondary, holding on, pulling at him. John Thomas again took a sideline pass, one on one, got a leg away from a corner, and then the safety came up. Here we are on the 18. Remember, a field goal cannot win. Ball just outside the 18. 238, 237. We're in an eye. We got two tight ends. The Cats are up on the six, though they're standing out on the flanks. Wayne Johnson to Hampton. Hampton fighting in, twisting to the 13, maybe. Gotta have a touchdown or you've lost. Jeff Kramer, the linebacker, hitting him. Well, they've completed just three passes in this half. They've all been to Thomas. They've all been in key situations. At times, they had to have the yardage. And now the dogs are fighting the clock, although that may not be that much of a factor. Second down and four, and a toss sweep to Hampton, pulling, stretching, trying to get to the 10, which is not enough. One man from behind, Big Barnett, that left tackle, pulling at him, and Chenault, the linebacker, holding on. And the play was maybe about three to the 10 and a half, and now you're third down and two. And the clock says a minute and 41. Look at the clock. And the dogs with two tight ends. Osborne wide left, third down. They need a couple of yards. And Wayne Johnson trying to sneak all the way to the five. 88, 88 seconds. Big Wayne Johnson pulled his legs away. They held him on the 10 or the nine and a half, but he went to the five. Kramer, the linebacker. Ron Robinson, the safety. Ball touching the five. 
and it's 14 to 10 still Kentucky 86 85 84 83 the seconds are going Osborne out to the left we're on the five the crowd rocking Wayne Johnson looking at a 6-4 setup gonna toss sweep to Tate Tate trying to come out Tate Tate yeah Dukes holds and Casey kicks good and it's 17 to 14 with 68 seconds. Timeout 60 second local break on the Georgia Bulldog Network. If you buy auto parts at a discount store, how do you know they're quality auto parts? Parts you can depend on for safe, reliable performance. Buy all your parts at your local Napa Auto Parts store, and there's no guesswork, because Napa brand parts are quality parts. And Napa... Deep man actually went to the wrong end of the field for the kickoff and had to run back down the other way. And now Georgia needs a very good kickoff, and they need to keep Kentucky backed up. The defense has been marvelous. They've held the Wildcats to 28 yards. Let's go down to Lauren. Well, Phil, with the touchdown, there was a sigh of relief here on the sideline because it had taken Georgia so long to ever get a position to get the lead. Now, though, nobody's taking anything for granted. They realize Kentucky's got time to do some damage, so that intimidating defense of the second half has got to come through again. Mike Guthrie asked the crowd to roar. Casey kicks off and hooks short to the seven. And flying up is D. Smith. He's going to the other side of the 21. He stopped, and one man got him. He tried to cut back in the middle, and Guthrie got him. Brown, Kevin Brown may have hit him first, and then Vince Guthrie. Kevin Brown on the kickoff team, one of the first men to hit him. Kentucky's got 60 seconds now to save themselves. They've led all day. That was one of Tate's biggest touchdowns. He's up there ahead. He's ahead of Trippy now, I guess, isn't he, on the number two all-time scoring thing? Yeah, ties him with Charlie for number ties two. Ties him with Trippy. All right, here are the Cats. They got three men, one of them in motion as wideouts, one back. Glenn Four back to throw. Four going to throw long down the middle. Intercepted on the 46. Headed for Jimmy O'Neill. Rusty Beasley. Rusty Beasley of Laconia. Had the ball hit him right in the chest. He was inside the receiver. Jumped high and it hit him in the chest. And the stadium rocks. Deep pass. They threw it hard down the middle. The dog intercepted with 52 seconds. Four had a man open on the left side about uh, 12 or 15 yards way off to the left. He passed him up. He looked him off. He wanted to go long. He felt that he had to throw long, so they throw it down the middle. It is intercepted, and now Georgia will just sit on the ball at an unbelievable cliffhanger finish for the dogs, just like uh, Dan McGill was talking about at halftime. We've seen another one here against the Wildcats, and again, Georgia's going to hold Kentucky to under 100 yards rushing. And North Carolina State at the end of the third is 30 to nothing on Clemson. Dixie Crystal Sugar scoreboard. Wayne Johnson just took a one-yard loss. He curled over the ball behind the line. Long, brutal, tough afternoon as you were warned over and over again it was going to be. And this line of scrimmage is so different that we faced in Vanderbilt. There's just, you know, no comparison. And let's have a big hand for Kurt Moll and the fact that he Ooh. did a great job on recovering that, that fumble. We'll be back after this 60-second local break on the Georgia Bulldog Network. Well, this game has been a heart stopper, which isn't exactly what the doctor ordered for Vince Dooley, but... Uh, Right now, his heart's going to be beating a little bit easier, 17 to 14 with 40 seconds to go. And again, Johnson will probably just fall on the ball. Kentucky's got but one timeout left. Kentucky is in a 5-3. Wayne Johnson going to keep it and then run and slide across the line and gain two yards. He took a one-yard loss, and then he gained a couple. It's third down. 
And the Cats will probably stop the clock. Now we run Cassius Osborne in. Wayne Johnson going to come over and say something to the coaches. Let's take a 30-second timeout here. Local break. Georgia Bulldog Network. Over Brothers Building Supplies remind you there's a new way to cut heating costs in your home without cutting comfort. Just install True Blue Styrofoam brand insulation from Dow. Styrofoam comes in 4x8 and 4x9 boards. And easy-to-follow literature is available to help. Get True Blue Styrofoam brand insulation at Kofer Brothers on Main Street in Tucker. That's Kofer Brothers in Tucker. Styrofoam is combustible and should be installed according to instruction. Styrofoam from the home team at Kofer Brothers. 17-14, 35 seconds left to go, and Kentucky is now out of timeouts, as we said, 35 seconds. Speaking of time, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Georgia Bulldog Network. Hi, this is Kathy Fishman along with Bobby Harper. Monday's the first day of National Magic Week, and we're going to do magic. You're going to help us do magic Monday morning on AM 750 WSB Atlanta. Third down, eight and a half. Here comes Wayne Johnson keeping, tucking the ball in with both hands outside the tackle, and he pushes out and gains about four yards. We had three backs behind him to guard him in case somebody punched the ball loose. And now look at the clock running with the ball on the 54th and four. The clock is running. This was worse than pulling teeth. This was really a dog-eat-dog -dog thing. And we had to have some luck, man, to win this thing. We had to have some luck. Georgia 17 to 14. The clock has ticked away. The dogs have won. I don't know if this is good for Dooley or not. Georgia's won at 17 to 14. Changed the quarterback at the half, trying to get something to change with him. We still had trouble throwing, and except when Wayne just straightened up and dumped it quickly over to a one-on-one -on -one isolation to John Thomas. We've won by the hardest. Six and two is the record now, but boy, is this thing tough. Phil will be back after this two-minute network break on the Georgia Bulldog Network. When Georgia families need service from their insurance agent, State Farm is there. From Savannah to Marietta, when you have a question or a claim, your State Farm agent is there, usually right down the street or as close as your phone, with answers, with help, with service you can count. In a great comeback performance, we were able to squeeze by Kentucky for the last-minute touchdown by the score of 17-14. to 14. It took the best second-half defensive performance of the year in order to make the victory possible. Perhaps the best example defensively was the three defensive plays that we had to make in order to get the ball back to let the offense take the last drive for the winning touchdown. Let's take a look at those three plays and the winning touchdown. Kentucky had stopped us on the sixth, and this is their first play, and Will Jones makes the stop at the line of scrimmage. Then our two linebackers, Brantley, Webster makes the stop, second down, and on third down, a whole host of players, which means that they had to punt to us, and we got the ball back, and on this play right here, Lars Tate, great block by Troy Sadowski, scores. We'll be back with a highlight after these messages. Our band did the pregame show, and Roger T Dance told me one of the special participants was retired judge Ralph Carlisle of Decatur. And there's Miss Homecoming, Charlita Stevens. Boy, is she happy. Judge Carlisle was with the Red Coat Band from 34 to 37. And there's last year's Miss Homecoming. And there's our captain, Mac Burroughs, Troy Sadowski, and Larry Brown. We had to win in the trenches. And we asked those guys to lead us. We got off to as bad a start, and we've been getting off to some bad starts. We don't make a good cut here, Cassius doesn't, and so we don't have good field position. And Kentucky is raring to go. We come out with this screen that does get us the first down. But on this play, another screen, Lars just drops the ball, and uh, then we really get in trouble. James can't find a receiver, so he throws. The ball is tipped, and they rule that there's nobody around, though I see Jackson 47 is a very eligible receiver. So that, that puts us back on the two, and Hester points out to the 41, and they got great field position. 
But now, we miss tackles. We're not playing good. We don't play very well in the first half. So we don't tackle too good. We don't block too good. And Kentucky plays, is playing very well. That's Higgs, who is a heck of a good runner, one of the leading runners in the conference. And this is Smith, who's got fine speed. And on short yardage, they pick up the first down. Big screen play that to their fullback that takes it to the one yard line. And then Higgs takes it in. And right away, they're up seven to nothing on us. They kick off again. And they place the ball perfect spot. And we don't adjust very well on our kickoff team. And we've been very good with the kickoff team. So now we're back to the 12-yard line. Bad field position once again. And Kentucky uh, has got their best, I think their best football team since Coach claven has been there for sure. And they were ready to play, and they played a fine football game in the first half. Had defended James Jackson pretty well, and James, uh, again, with his ankle and his uh, rib cage uh, being bruised, uh, was certainly not on top of his game in the first half. Once again, they got great field position. They come right down the field, Higgs again. Higgs again, number 22. Now the left tackle sort of moves in, but Smith makes a tremendous play right here, going up and then reacting right here and gets the touchdown. And bang, we're down 14 to nothing at the end of the first quarter. We get good field position uh, as a result of a poor kick, which enables us to probably put our only drive in the first half. This is a short yardage play, option pitch out to Nate Lewis. Good blocking on the corner by Rodney Hampton. And uh, James picks, you can see James right here, his uh, ribs are hurting a little bit. There's Rodney Hampton, who had another fine football game. We go down here to about the one and a half yard line. And it was tempting to try to go for it, but I felt like we needed to get something on the scoreboard. And fortunately, it worked out because this ended up being the margin of victory, the three points there was the three points that enable us to win the game. Kentucky, uh, with their quarterback four, continues to come down the field, running and throwing. They, he throws this one, that safety man falls down, but uh, they were holding, and we were fortunate here because that certainly could have been a touchdown. They throw to their fullback on third and very long, and he makes the first down. We're not doing anything uh, particularly well right now. That's a great sidearm throw. And everything they are doing, they're doing it well. Good running by their fullback. We've got to have a big play. Somebody's got to give it to us. And right there, Will Jones gives it to us. This is certainly one of the biggest plays in the football game. If they'd have put some points on the board then, we'd have been in, in tough trouble. So the clock's running down. Alfonso Ellis, who certainly played a, a good football game under a lot of uh, due rest. Uh, he uh, had a pull growing, was not uh, healthy at all. We're trying up and out, and there's interference called there, so we're going to try to put the ball up. Can't throw it, so James decides to run, and they knock it out of his hand and fumble the ball. So we end up with a very poor first half, down by 14 to 3. We'll be back with a feature on homecoming. To McDonald's immediately. The great appeal of homecoming is that it's special to everybody. 
to those who were once here as undergraduates and who came back for the big weekend. Special, too, to those who are still on campus pursuing a degree, realizing that the college years are the best years of your life. Like Kelly Clark, a senior from Moultrie, who is Student Alumni Council President. Kelly says that the spirit of homecoming brings the campus closer together. I think probably most of the students enjoy the participation that they can interact with one another. Um, the whole campus, you're not divided up anymore. The, the Greeks, the, all the student organizations, the dormitories, everyone interacts and participates and gets involved in the spirit of homecoming. I think the spirit is probably tradition. Um, there is so much tradition at this school, and of course, everyone appreciates that more than more than anything. I think that um, it's not just winning a football game; it's knowing that there are people here, been pe people here that have been here a lot longer than you have, that enjoy it just as much as you. And when you see the love that they have for this school, it makes you that much more excited about homecoming. Painting the town red and black raising money for charity, planning numerous activities for the returning alumni, are among the many activities that are organized on the Georgia campus for homecoming each year. Of course, putting together a float for the parade is one of the major projects of the week for many campus organizations. Putting together a good float like the one behind us, I would think it takes at least, if you start it on Tuesday, it takes you at least three good days. And of course, everyone has to go to class and, and eat and, and sleep. It, now, some students will throw together a float in a day or, you know, work on it all night long and get it here, you know, putting the last things on. You could probably walk around this parking lot and find people sticking things on their float at the last minute. But I, I would think a really good float takes about three days. The annual homecoming parade, which has had to endure rain and cloudy weather the last few years, was blessed with sunshine. And the Georgia campus has never been more colorful than in the autumn of 87. For Kelly Clark and the student homecoming officials, Homecoming and the Homecoming Parade were a grand success. All the organizations participated and put together awesome floats and showed a lot of spirit. Everyone followed the rules, and, and that helps the Homecoming Committee so much when you see that students can pull together and show their school spirit. A lot of planning by a lot of people and a lot of hard work made for a very successful homecoming. The spirits were high, and I enjoyed riding in the parade. And I was right uh, ahead of the band, and I want to take the opportunity to thank uh, every member of the band for the giant Get Well card that you sent me, where every member alternated signing red and black. I appreciate it. We'll be back with the second half highlights after these messages. The Red Coat Band had another great show, and I had a chance to see some of their rehearsal, uh, and they really put in a lot of hard work. Well, Kentucky continued to put the pressure on us in the third quarter. And this series right here, as they've got us now with the lead, they're inside our 35-yard line, but a big play by Vince Guthrie and Steve Harmon. And John Brantley loses six. Good rush by Tardis. So now the field goal kicker has to kick from 51 yards out, and he's off to the left. We need something big to happen, and on the next play, we get it. Kurt Mull, Alfonso Ellis makes the blocks, and there goes Rodney Hampton, and watch the block by Cassius Osborne right there. Good feet and excellent running. And all of a sudden, things, for the first time, begin to look bright. Wayne Johnson keeps great block by Wheeler and Burroughs and also Kim Stevens right up the middle for the touchdown. So in two plays, we score. And now we cut it to 14 to 10, late in the third quarter. But there's a lot of frustrations before we finally win the football game. We're beginning to take control. The defense was just playing great. Dusty Beasley goes up along with Mark Benson. We almost make the interception here. Good play here by John Brantley, Will Jones. And you could feel the momentum. The crowd was certainly into the football game now. Over here, uh, Mike Brown makes a great tackle. So we're excited. We're playing defense the way it ought to be played. We get good field position. Nate Lewis brings it up for about eight or 10 yards. 
Alfonso Ellis runs. Well, we're blocking the line of scrimmage. A little reverse uh, to Nate Lewis that has good speed. And we go for the first down. We're inside the 35. Wayne keeps. But we make it hard on ourselves. Wayne lets this one go. Uh, probably shouldn't have. And their cornerback, Robinson, who is a good one, makes a great interception. And Higgs comes out. He's a good runner. Good tackle by Ben Smith. Needs something to happen. Come on, Larry. Larry Brown has his first sack. They only have 33 yards in the second half and three first downs. Now, this play right here could have really gotten us in trouble. Fortunately, both of their wide receivers were moving. It's a pretty good lick. But um, we were lucky on two occasions that there were flags on what would have been touchdowns. But penalties are part of the game. When we fumble it, we got to fall on it and not pick it up. So we were lucky there. Now we go into the fourth. And we're moving the ball pretty good. We're beginning to be sharp blocking. This right here, golly. Massey's a good football player for them, number six, and Wayne was great to hang on to the ball. But right here makes another bad play, and Massey, number six, makes the interception. And now our defense has got to come in and play defense again. And boy, do they do it. Great tackle right there. And I, think, I know that was Vince Guthrie, and I think it was Terry Weston. Time after time, we had to have some, some big plays defensively. And there's another one. Andy Dotson knocks the ball down. Big defensive play. And we continue to be unlucky on punts. That this one hits right on the one and bounces back. And then we're on the two. And boy, what a great job we did of coming out. Alfonso Ellis right here. Cuts all the way back. Picks up the first down, but loses the ball. We were fortunate. Good read here. Wayne to John Thomas, who caught three balls like that, three big ones. Lars Tate running, tough running. We're blocking good up front. This almost was a 98-yard drive. The draw play and Alfonso gets turned every way imaginable and finally gets back on the right course and picks up about four. Good read and watch John Thomas. He is tough to tackle. Now we got it down to the 13th. He snapped the ball a little early there. Now we go to the 10 yard line. There we go. This is fourth and one. We miss a block on the corner. They make a great play. And he only gets about three-fourths of a yard, just shy. Now, here are the three plays where we got to stop them because there's about four minutes left. We can't afford them to move the football. That's the linebackers, Webster, Brantley. And we're, we're playing good. Just need to stop them, and we do. They got a punt to us. We got the ball about midfield. Good running, good blocking. Really coming off. This is uh, do or die right here. Now, we were fortunate here. Kurt Mull does a great job of getting that arm out there and getting the football. Big, big play. Here's the read again. John Thomas ran over him there, picked up seven more yards. Inside the 20. Hampton for four. Third and two. And uh, Wayne sees a hole and he just takes it himself, so he's down to the five. And this is the big play. Troy Sadowski up in your screen, gets the tight end, and he knocks him into the cornerback. 
and sets Lars Tate free. And Lars' touchdown ties a record by Charlie Trippy behind Herschel Walker. Career touchdown. Now we need something big to happen. There's still a minute left in the ball game. Anything can happen. And Rusty Beasley makes a big interception. Right here. And we finally run out the clock and uh, win by the score of uh, 17 to 14. We'll have an off week next week. And we'll talk about what we'll be doing and some of the key injuries, and we do have some key injuries. We'll be back after this. This is a test. This. Well, the off week is needed. We're really banged up. Alfonso Ellis uh, really played a courageous game uh, with a bad leg. Uh, Todd Wheeler uh, certainly needs a week off. Martin Benson hurt his hand. Many, many others are bruised up. Uh, so the, walk, the off week is really uh, welcome and it'll help us physically and mentally. I do want to take the opportunity to thank uh, all of you for your kindness and concern last week and any phone calls and cards uh, and letters. I deeply appreciate it. We'll see you next week with an off week show. The Vince Dooley Show. Brought to you by McDonald's. By the official airline of the Georgia Bulldog, Delta. We love to fly, and it shows. By Coca-Cola Classic, you can't beat the feeling. By Citizens and Southern Banks of Georgia. By the Farm Credit Services in Georgia. If you're planning for the future, plan with us. And by these special friends of Georgia football. Good afternoon.